simp, not a simp. A, 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 a simp, not a simp. A, 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 a simp, not a simp. We eat so many shrimp. I got I die for My bitch a choose it. Lover never fuck without a rubber. Never in the sheets like it on top of the cover. Money on the dresser. Drive a compressor. Top notch hoes. Get the most, not the lesser. Trash like the buck of $40 in the club. So what does it do if I do this? Bitch, it gets no love. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> I was just checking for, like, if I go for a cocktail or whatever. I don't think I have anything. Damn. <laughs> One of my proudest moments. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. You know, you know, it's the viewers. I saw that same segment and I'm like, I don't know what to do with this guy. Am I on? I can't see comments. I can't see chat. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Let's talk about Artie. <laughs> Here, maybe, maybe I can find, maybe I can do this on my device. Can y'all, there we go. Okay, now we're back in business. All right. I, I gotta, I still gotta fix these things when it comes to my VR headset. It just screws up my audio, my, my sound things for, um, oh, we got our other special guest. Just in time for my mic to start working. Hey. Hey. Natalie, what's up? Hey, hey. <laughs> we also have, uh, Natalie Laurie trick here in the house for this final episode uh highlighting this phenomenon as as I was mentioned trying to mention to you in the, I guess the chat didn't hear it because I uh I was muted but I was just saying earlier that I only ever her first my first encounter with uh Kim Blandino was his court cam segment from from ages ago and then I didn't think nothing of it until I saw uh, Mike's uh, segments on him. And I'm like, who is this guy? And then it was yet another rabbit hole that I decided to uh, fall into. And here we are. But uh, glad to have both it's of you It's a good guys rabbit hole. Oh, yeah. It's, well, I wish I thought that I found Kim Blandino on my own. I did not. <laughs> well, not not so much on my own. I shouldn't say that. But the guy that w runs our Nevada judges was like, hey, check out Kim Blandino. And I'm like, OK, I'll get around to it. That was like weeks and weeks ago. And then finally, I was like looking for content. And I was like, OK, let me do this guy. I upload my video and then I search him. And then I'm like, oh, my God, you guys have been covering him <laughs> for weeks. <laughs> I've been so behind. Alex is awesome. Oh. He's great. 
Yes, I was going to say, uh, fo following Kim, I ended up having me uh, fall into our, uh, locating our Nevada judges, and then that is what turned me into the Michael McDonald saga, which, I mean, that's, that's an entirely, that's its own thing over there, like, I, you can't get enough over through that one. So but, many rabbit holes. Oh, yeah. So, um... Yeah, so a shout out to them. Uh, we're most of the what we're going to be watching is from uh, our Nevada judges since they have most of the content, you know, post you know mid twenty twenty onward. So just to um, give you guys, uh, you guys in the audience, um, from here, the la when I last ended part three, it was when uh, Mr. Blandino ha was uh, found competent in April twenty twenty and was released to over his objection to being found competent. But and and we're going to be going through um, from then on. Um, we're not going to go through all the videos because there's just we're not going to be we're going to be here all night. But I was just going to say that I'm only going to highlight the fact that this guy has delayed these proceedings from July 1, 2020 into December of this year, December 2021, due to. As the title of my of uh, tonight's stream, uh, the thumbnail indicates his constant motions to disqualify everybody uh, who uh, sits before him, as well as his refusal to adhere to the court's uh, mask requirement. Or, God forbid, this man learns a little bit of technology and blue jeans. Blue, blue <laughs> jeans. So, with that being said, we're gonna get started. Uh, with the first hearing, it's a short one at four and a half minutes at July 1st, 2020. I can't speak. I cannot speak with him unless he's compliant with that order. So, um, I, I didn't anticipate, frankly, Mr. Blandino getting anywhere with Mr. Blandino in any event today. So, if he's refusing that, uh, let the lieutenant, uh, let Lieutenant Wooten. Yes, he's, he's actually on the way down now, sir, if you want to just give it a spot. Yeah, no, I'll just hold off, and if not, then we'll just uh, send Mr. Blandino. Yes, sir. Hey, good morning, Your Honor, or afternoon. This is Ben Babe, and I am standby counsel for Mr. Blandino. Okay. Um, All right. So, Did you hear what the, we're currently not on the record on this case. Did you hear what the uh, marshal had to say? He, uh, yeah, he's, he's refusing to wear a mask or something like that. Yes. Probably shouldn't even okay. be in the building. But, uh, okay. Melanie Marlon for the state on behalf of Michael Dickerson. Okay. We're just going to stand easier, Sorry. sit, relax. What happens? Wait, is he in custody here? No, he's out of custody, but he actually, they let him walk in. <laughs> and at least this one. We throw, we throw him That's the only reason why I'm showing this one, because he actually does make an appearance here. For blue jeans, maybe he has new jeans. Does he? Uh, yep, there he is. Or, no, I don't think they let him in this one. He can't. It's under, under the rules, he cannot... Okay. Appear. That's all I need to know. All right, let's go on the record. Uh, C three four one six seven six seven. Say that versus Kim Blandino. Record should reflect Mr. Blandino's present out of custody in the hallway. He is pro se. Uh, could I have counsel? Uh, I could have sworn it was this one. Correct. Are you still there? You are. Um, and and I'm sorry. Who's yes. who's pro? Who's uh, standby? Uh, it's me, Your Honor. Ben Bateman, bar number nine three three eight. I'm stand standby counsel for Mr. Blandino. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Bateman. All right. Um, this is time set trial readiness conference for the record. Formally, Mr. Uh, uh, the, the trial readiness calendar is set with the intention of assisting parties and currently assigned departments to promote resolution. Any action taken by parties must be voluntary and consistent with the rules while effectively managing limited resources within current COVID-19 directives from the executive branch and balancing the NSO uh, public concern. Mr. Blandino refusing to wear a mask is... Uh, directly against the COVID-19 restrictions as imposed by the executive branch by the governor, by Governor Sisolak. Um, although nobody else is present here, uh, I don't, I, I cannot deviate from that directive. Um, I am not holding Mr. Blandino 
to account for that. I'm not making a finding other than he he's in the hallway refusing to. I could have man, I could have sworn it was this one. I know he makes an appearance in one. There's so uh, no many of them though. Yeah, I know he but makes. But I just reacted to this one. He doesn't come into the courtroom. Uh, okay, I do remember. I, there's one recent one where he tries to walk in and then they say nope, nope, get out of the building. 2020. Uh, Miss Marlin, anything? Well, Your Honor, I do know that Mr. Dickerson extended an offer to Mr. Blandino, and I believe oh, also no, um, I, provided that I, to Mr. Bateman. Mr. Ms. Ms. Marlin, Ms. Mr. Pardon? Bateman, I, I'm not going to take any action because Mr. Blandino is not in the room. Yes. Um, yeah. All I can do is the matter uh, remains assigned to Department 12 for further and on the date August 4th for further proceedings, okay? Or for calendar. Thank you, Judge. All right, thank you all. Well, that was the whole deal. Uh, I didn't see that. No, no, there's there's so many of them, and he gets so many. Ah, there, here it is. This one. Okay, this is Yes, Your Honor. Uh, ben Bateman, bar number 9338. There he is. Stand by counsel for the defendant, Mr. Blanton. He's not wearing a mask. He cannot come in. I've got a religious exemption. I've got a wearing a mask. Mr. Blandino, I've got a medical and religious exemption. I've got an application to the U.S. Supreme Court on this matter. He's not wearing a mask. Of course he does. All right, Mr. Put some plexiglass up. Mr. Do alternatives. I object. Let's go. I object as he points at the judge, which is very rude. But. Okay. I, I I have so many clients that are like him. I find him to be so endearing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's like you know my job is just corrupting my brain because I'm like, oh, Mr. Blanty. <laughs> oh, that, oh, that's so cute. Oh, go outside, <laughs> get on blue jeans and stop it. <laughs> I'm a lord. Of course you are, sweetie. It's okay. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> And I would just note for the record, Your Honor, that this is the second time that we've had a hearing held in this case where the uh, and expect that to happen for a while. Okay, so real quick. Again, like I said, we're not going to go through every single one of these, even though they're relatively short. And it has come to court and refused to wear a mask. But this one is August 11th. And, uh, then caused some scene as a result. This one is August 18th, and he's not here. And then we're now on November 19th of 2020, which does he make an appearance? No, not in this one either. The record would. I mean, ba uh, Bateman appears, and the district attorney appears in blue jeans, but uh, Blandino still doesn't show up on November 19, 2020. Excuse me. Everybody else. He again does not appear on December 1st, 2020. He does not appear. Is he not appearing via blue jeans either? No, he refuses to. Uh, he does not appear on December 17th. Nope, he's not there either. Well, I, you know, I didn't know all this. Okay, I, as usual, I'm learning more here. Uh, I didn't know all this. I mean, why, just hold him in contempt. I don't get it. I know. But finally, finally, he shows back up March 16th of this year. So almost a full year since he was released from uh, custody. Mm. This is a mic up. check. Say Excelsior if you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Stanley you know, ass you motherfucker. Excelsior. <laughs> Ma'am, do not humor him. Like Monday, not so many people yeah. humor him, and I know why. <laughs> Look, when you like have like actual like serious cases, something uh, like this is just so entertaining in the middle of the day, you know? Yeah. That, I mean, that's fair, actually. I, I, I get that. I do get that. Go to this technology. But no, you shouldn't stuff. encourage it. You shouldn't encourage it. Right. <laughs> State of Nevada versus Landino, KC 341767. Who's here for the state? Mike Dickerson on behalf of the state, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Dickerson. Mr. Blandino, will you please state your full name? I'm Kim Blandino. I'm appearing pro se only by special appearance. I have Chris. Uh -huh. Oh, boy. Cave next to me. He's a witness and assisting me at counsel. Ben Bateman, 
I don't know where he is. He, oh, I'm in Ben Bateman's office. I don't know yeah. this technology <laughs> stuff. So therefore, I'm using Ben Bateman's uh, technology ben. here in his office. Thank you. And then, Mr. Bateman, will you make your appearance? Yes. Uh, yes. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Ben Bateman, bar number 9338. I'm uh, standby counsel for Mr. Blandino. Okay. Ironically, I'm at the RJC. <laughs> I like if COVID your beard. office. Okay. Mm. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got a sentencing in Department 18. I'm waiting on. <laughs> yeah, that Mr. Blandino did appear today via blue jeans. Um, I know the state has this motion on regarding. Um, uh, I need to interject, Judge. I'm sorry. Oh, here, here, here. All right. So. <laughs> she doesn't yeah. say anything yet. I, I know, but I want to. <laughs> I want the audience to get prepared. Be prepared for this recurring meme for the rest of the evening so just just as a heads up there's a motion to disqualify <laughs> and even levit is like motion to disqualify you you have no no stop. Mr. Blandino, stop talking who's saying stop talking the bailiff <laughs> who's saying stop talking? That. the court is telling you to stop talking she is trying to talk to you so let the judge speak Ooh. I know that the state has filed their motion. He's so mad. The state filed their motion. Uh, the state filed their motion on March 8th. And then, uh, you know, the state filed their motion. And then a couple days later, Mr. Blandino filed a motion to disqualify. And so, therefore, I'm going to uh, vacate today. And I will put it back on for after April 15th. He's also. If there's a record being made, I need to make a record. Well, I, need I don't know why he's even talking. Let's just go. Need to make a, a record. After April 15th. That's what your motion was. It made no, your record. So it's going to be April 21st. Or, I'm sorry, it'll be April 22nd. I it's can't hear that. Can you speak louder? <laughs> the continued date for the state's motion is going to be April 22nd at 1230. Is that him. April 22nd at 1230? Mm -hmm. That's correct. He's got to be trolling. You. He's got to be. I, I can't make <laughs> a record make a point. Yet. We're done with your case. Can I make a record? Case, no. Mr. Brandino, have a good day. There's no record to make. You filed your motion. They need a continuance to respond. There's no record to make. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm, I'm like that. I'm always trying to make my record. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so we're now at, uh, again, we're now April 29th. He does not show up. Kim Blandy. Oh, wait, he does show up. What the hell? Um, you're you're entitled to. See, three, four, one, seven, six, seven. Who's here for the state? Mike Dickerson on behalf of the state, Your Honor. Hey, is standby council present? Kim Blandy. Appearing post day stamp, open and is right next. Can you see me? Yeah, stand by counsel. Okay, thank you. At this time, um, I'm just going to take the matter off calendar. When the issue gets resolved, we will um, place the state's motion back on, which is the motion to disqualify. I'm just wondering, Judge, I have an objection. Why didn't you do this and not have to have this hearing? You knew it was on motion to disqualify. I find this a Thank you. We're done. Thank you, Father. I appreciate that. <laughs> have a good day. Everybody have a good day. Hey, hey you want to vacate uh, uh, the order? You want to stop it? They're going to stop it. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to more of the meat of, um, of what's going on with this one. Um, this is August 24th of this year. You're and, entitled uh, to testify if you want to testify. Oh, no. Oh, oh no, God. testify as an expert witness. An expert in what? <laughs> I'm an expert in my own religious beliefs after okay. studying in comparative religious belief. And my religious beliefs are what motivated the conduct that the district attorney finds criminal. And Okay, I'm oh. going to have to ask you about this legal strategy, uh, Natalie, as the defense counsel here. Okay. <laughs> He is I'm, saying that. Uh, let me just give a caveat. I just had a four-hour-long motion to suppress. <laughs> this is my. I got home. 
I didn't do anything, but this is my second glass of wine. So that is my caveat, okay? Case Fair enough. Answer, no sense. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so his theory here that he wants to bring himself as an expert witness to show, to demonstrate his religious beliefs and convictions, which motivated him to do this sort of volunteer audit or investigation into judicial corruption yeah. and that is that was that the purpose that's what he's claiming and that oh, I, thought, the, I thought this was the mask stuff all over no no no. at first sometimes that is what he's saying that his religious beliefs is what makes him exempt from having to wear a mask in the courtroom but right now what he just said was that his religious beliefs motivated his conduct and therefore right. he should be found not guilty right he he is saying that his religious beliefs motivated him to conduct these investigations which in turn uh made him create that letter or what whatever it was to that pro tem judge which the state interpreted it as a uh extortion so okay that's where he's coming so, from here yeah so this is just in general this is not legal advice to mr blandino or anyone else that may Adopt this philosophy. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Disclaimer done. <laughs> but the understanding of the courts is that although you have freedom of religion, the rest of us have freedom from religion. And so your religious beliefs cannot form as a justification for you to commit certain crimes. So for example, there are people like Christian scientists who genuinely believe in not having medical intervention for certain issues, for most of their medical issues. And they have been charged with neglecting their children or endangerment of their children when their children have had medical issues and then they don't take them to the hospital and then the child dies, right? Or it suffers like really terrible medical effects as a result of it. And they advance the defense that we're Christian scientists, we don't believe in medical intervention from doctors, we believe in prayer instead of medical intervention. And the courts have held continuously over and over again that that is not a defense against neglect and child endangerment charges. And the same would apply here. So mm -hmm. I would imagine in general, if your conduct, even though it's based on your religious beliefs, leads you to stalk and harass other people because you genuinely believe that your religion compels you to do so, your religious beliefs are not a defense. You are free to believe whatever you want, but you must comport your behavior within the confines of the law. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is pretty much squares with my understanding as well. Yes. Um, there's only very, very, very few instances that I can recall where, you know, sincere religious beliefs have been able to be a justification, but uh, it's very rare if, if at all. Um, Usually so. it's civil stuff, like yeah. the gay cake case right the bakery case right where that was like a first amendment our religious beliefs we are against gay marriages so we're not going to make a cake for a gay marriage that has a gay marriage theme on it and the supreme court held that that was okay but that was you know there's there's the uh the battling of rights there you know where gay rights are not seen as subject to strict scrutiny and people have their first amendment religious beliefs but that was not them using their religious beliefs to commit a crime. Mm -hmm. You cannot, you just can't do that. Mike? Well, here's, here's where I always have the problem, and you guys do too, like what to explain. Because he, he starts off with, I want to testify as an expert witness. Well, we're not at trial. We're not offering evidence. <laughs> Right. And then I have to do 20 minutes on what an expert witness is versus an occurrence witness or, yep. you know, all this sort of stuff. And I don't know if anybody would hang around long enough, but just take my word for it. It's completely insane to be discussing testifying as an expert witness in this context. We're, we're, we're not we're not at trial. We're not. Just yeah. just, just state we, your motion. <laughs> we're, we're not. Yeah. I, at this stage, we're we're nowhere even close to that, because right now I think we're the state is still trying to actually file a motion uh, to revoke his self-representation. But the fact but they haven't even gone through that over a year because of what's going on here. Um, and so we're not even close to dealing with uh, expert witness. Never mind his theory that he can be an expert witness in his own religious beliefs which is itself weird and unorthodox to say, to yeah. say the yeah. least 
I've never heard of someone testifying as an expert witness in their own case, even if this was procedurally appropriate, which is, which is not. It's not trial. Right, right. I've never heard of that before. Someone. Yeah, being, I, I, I don't. Th I don't think it's allowed. I, yeah. <laughs> Even yeah. if they don't allow it on cross examination, you're going to get. Of course, you're biased in your opinion. Yeah. It's your own case. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to go through um, uh, a few of the super chats so it doesn't get too too long, and then we're going to continue on. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Before you do that, could you guys please like this video because I'm only seeing 49 likes and 440 people watching, and that ain't right. Yeah, that, thank you guys. That's an outrage. No, come on now. Don't the do dogs that. are getting it tonight. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Col Colony L3199 for a po new post that says already check sound. Yeah, I, I don't know why. It's a staple of this channel that I always have sound issues. So I apologize. Well, I want to thank you, Artie, because I made, in Artie's defense, I made him change his thing because I just can't get on in dis with Discord. We tried to do this last time. That's so okay. he's, he's, he's using different software tonight. You still use Discord? Yeah. I mean, I cannot do it. I can't. That's right. Shame him. Shame him, Natalie. How do you do it? <laughs> no, he must be like a, a, a computer genius. I'm an, e I'm an epic gamer nerd, and that's what Discord used to be all about before it decided to expand. And so it's I've, I've been used to. It's software. <laughs> okay. So uh, you agree with Mike. If Mike says it's completely convoluted. I, I don't see it personally, yeah. but I, I, I've also have experienced it for like the last five years. So, mm -hmm. uh, Nimrod 26, thank you very much. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> I don't know. One to change the light bulb, the two to file motions to suppress. I, I don't know. I don't go. know the joke. Um, <laughs> I like that. Akira 808 State 499, great stream already. Have a Merry Christmas and enjoy your vacation. Thank you very much, 808. Uh, $5 uh, from Sean, and we're off. Thank you very much. $5 from Auditor Investigation. How's feeling? Uh, Natalie, Mike, Artie, you and all your uh, favors ha uh, families have a Merry Christmas. Thank you very much, Auditor. Thank you. Uh, Corrections 101, thank you for being a member for four months. Hi, Artie. Thank you for the great content. As always, loving this coverage of Blandino the Clown. Thank you very much, Corrections. Uh, Jeremy Eddins, $10. Three cheers for the Christmas beers. And a hello to Mike and Natalie. Uh, cheers to you, man. I've, I'm... I still got plenty of Shiner uh, holiday cheer left, and I'm enjoying every second of it. Uh, keep it a criminal. $5. Zoomception. I heard you like law. Lawyers watching lawyers. Lawyering with a pretend lawyer. Hashtag uwu crew. Hashtag love me already. And Mrs. Kick says hi. Hi, Kick. Hi, Kick. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, t Scott Comstock. Uh, $20, forget Monday Night Football. I like Monday Night Lawyering. Thank you very much, uh, Scott, for the $20. Uh, and uh, we'll stop here with a Kit190. Thank you for the $5. Already, if you were a judge for Blandino, would you have held him in contempt or would you have played with him like these judges do? To be perfectly honest, if I under if I knew his prior history um, and his current standing, you know, because before... Right around, right around when he had these charges was when he was labeled a vexatious litigant. It was like 2018, and it was around 2018 when he got these charges. I wouldn't have played around. Like, if I knew his reputation ahead of time, I would not have let this gone on for this long. Um, and I don't think the um, the judge should have allowed it to go on for over a year uh, like it did. So there's the answer to that question. All right, we got everybody's got the refills. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. And which is not, no means is criminal. So I can I can testify as to Mr. Blandino, religious beliefs, how they've been developing and evolving over the years, and how that his main belief is not to do crimes. When people start to refer to themselves in the third person when representing themselves, state of Nevada versus you guys, why you shouldn't represent yourself. Cringe. Oh, I got it's the email so from him. Cringe. Kim. Yeah. Blank. Uh, yeah, me too. Dino. KC three four one seven six seven. Who is here on behalf of the state of Nevada? Mike Dickerson on behalf of the state of Nevada, Your Honor. Bar number one three four seven six. Thank you, Mr. Blandino. Would you like to make your appearance? Okay. How's that? Perfect. 
Go ahead, you can make you your appearance. Kim Blandino appearing pro se by blue jeans. Uh, they won't let me in the courthouse without a mask, and so I can't wear a mask, and uh, that's why I'm appearing here, oh, necessity. Thank you. thank you, and Mr. Bateman, do you want to make your appearance? Yes, uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. Ben Bateman, bar number 933, and I'm standby counsel for Mr. Blandino. Okay, thank you very much, and thank you very much. Right for off the bat, much. there is uh, there is no way you can proceed forward. Uh, Tierra Jones has an unadjudicated motion to disqualify against mm -hmm. her. It was okay. filed. Okay. Mr. Blandino, I am going to proceed, and if you interrupt me, then I'm going to have the clerk moot your microphone. Okay. I object. I, am going I object. Uh, real, real brief. Um, I'm, I because. When I fell down this rabbit hole, I fell down deep to the point where I did actually look up the docket history of this particular criminal case. Oh. And so Tiara, uh, what's I, uh, Tiara, Tiana Williams? I can't, oh my God, I completely forgot her name already. Was she, it Jones? Jones, yeah. She was yeah. brought in uh, to, because Blandino had, well, here's the thing. First, uh, she he filed a motion to disqualify this judge, uh, Levitt, and another judge um they brought in at which blandino concedes was uh appropriate another judge from a separate district uh judge wilson to preside over the motions to disqualify the judge there um rejected his motion to disqualify that's already been done by this point uh, uh by this hearing he then kept on filing more obviously so then uh, Miss Jones was brought in to rule over his renewed motion to disqualify. And then before she could even do that, he had already filed a motion to disqualify her, which again, which is was his pattern of every single judge that would come in to try and rule on this matter. He would just file an immediate motion to disqualify. Mm. So, which again, while I would not tolerate the actions of the judges uh, as seemingly as they did, at the same time, there were certain moments where they really, they genuinely couldn't do anything because he kept on filing these motions to disqualify. Which, mm -hmm. so, so that I can't, I can't say it's completely the lack of, uh, uh, not for lack of trying by the judges to get him to knock it off. This like they couldn't do anything because of Blandino's actions. Hmm. It, I, I feel for him because, uh, you know, I don't do criminal like but in a civil context, you don't have this. You're not talking about taking someone's liberty. I, I can tell you right now because I've seen it happen a hundred times in my career. If you, if someone brings a judge uh, a motion like that, they shouldn't like it just a second time because attorneys will do this. A judge will just say, I've seen it. They just say your motion's stricken. If you bring it again, I'm, I'm you're getting sanctions and it's over. It's and that, over. And that was one of the but other that's civil. things, too. You're not True. talking about a pro se defendant who's going to jail. That, that It's a different set of circumstances. Yeah, and, and, the, and the Nevada rules that I did look up on disqualification doesn't have any sort of, like, limitations or exceptions or anything like that. It, but at the same time, and what they'll end up talking about is, like, you know, Blandino, we have literally, literally have not done anything. We have not moved at all ever since your first... <laughs> Uh, motion to disqualify was rejected. How can you possibly have a meritorious renewed motion to disqualify if there's literally been nothing done, you know, since then? So they're going to point that out. Going to proceed. You can object. I understand you object to me proceeding over this. I got it, and the record will reflect that. So the first motion, the state's motion. To remand the defendant or order additional conditions of release. Mr. Dickerson, do you want to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, so this motion was placed on calendar uh, back in February of 2021 based upon the defendant sending the state. 2020? 20. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, 2020. Yeah, the state it's sending. It's been about a year and a half. Yeah. That's you correct. Really want to point that out. The state sending the, uh, the defendant sending the state a letter. Uh, indicating extremely concerning things about him going to the named victim's home, as well as uh, municipal. I mean, that there was the discreet distance. Okay. Not okay. You, you, know, you can speak you after me. Interrupt the district attorney. If you proceed on interrupting people when they're talking again, I will mute your microphone. Mr. Okay. Dickerson, you may proceed. 
Thank you. Honey. The defendant sending this letter to us indicating he's going to visit the named victim's home as well as uh, another judge's home and uh, pretty much indicating in there that, hey, guess what? Looks like I'm no longer on high level electronic monitoring so I can do what I want and the condition of no contact does not apply. I would suggest that since it has been such a long time, um, without a doubt, the court should, uh, at the very least, make sure that it is clear that the uh, condition of having no contact with the named victim, and I would also submit as well as any other uh, sitting judge or pro tem judge in Clark County, since uh, obviously that's the basis of what he's indicating here uh, during the time of his release on this case. That would be a at a minimum. Okay, and so I, I, I know that the initial no contact order was asked to Mr. Frederico. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. And then I thought there was another judge that um, I guess presided over a TPO hearing, and that judge was a temporary judge as well. The Shannon Nordstrom is a judge that the defendant has become fixated on over the years, and that's who he was indicating within the letter that he was going to also go to her house to oh. conduct some sort of surveillance upon her residence. Okay. All right. So the state is, is seeking to just make sure that he understands those conditions? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Blandino, do you want to be heard? Okay. Again, I got to renew my objection. I'm only speaking. Uh, you, you, you don't have the capacity to move forward, but since you're forcing me to move forward and I got to defend myself against illegal acts, namely you sitting on here when okay. there's an un motion. Uh, listen, Mr. Blandino, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go through this every time you have an opportunity to talk. Well, here, you to have about four motions to disqualify. Each and every one of them have been denied. I have jurisdiction and we're going to proceed. So if you want to talk about this specific issue, you may. Okay, I'm, Go ahead. I'm going to have because uh, they're trying to do something illegal here and they're lying to, again on the record. I said that I would be maintain a discreet distance to view that home, which would be any discreet distance that would normally be in a. Uh, this so is you're a going home he's talking about. <laughs> so you're going to you're admitting that you're going to his house, but you're only going to observe discreetly. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> he he looked up he looked it up and tried to I mean he writes a letter and says he's just he's doing it for a rise, that's it. Uh in a uh temporary restraining order or a protective order. The thing is is that it was Subsequent to filing a suit, which I have now filed, the court can take judicial notice. I filed a federal suit against Michael Federico for abuse of process. I have a responsibility filing the suit to investigate, you know, to see if there's anything regarding that. But in, in, in absolute truth, and I state this under penalty of perjury, I have not visited Federico's home. I'm not Feder Nordstrom. It's in light, the reason I sent this uh, and it's not really a trial balloon, but I sent this notice to uh, Mr. Dickerson and to the other parties in that note was to see if there was any fuss made about it. And, it's, uh, and I got the ankle bracelet to prove it. I haven't been anywhere near those persons. And the court doesn't have to make any conditions. I, I just say, I want, I'm not going to do that until that's resolved. But uh, okay. the, the point has that. to be... But after he's going over there, <laughs> he said until that's resolved. But afterwards, <laughs> he seems like he is the kind of guy that would admit, like, um, if the order said stay 100 feet away, he said, OK, I'll just be 105 feet away. Completely. Natalie, if <laughs> completely I, I, I missing the you, point, if, <laughs> if, if he would listen to you. I mean, the charges aren't that bad. They're just, they're literally, the charges are, if you stop this, we'll just slap your wrist and go away. W would, you, would you help the man? If you, I'm not saying you would, but like, and you're not licensed there, but I mean, could, couldn't you get a good deal on this? Oh, if I was licensed in Nevada, I would definitely represent Mr. Blandino. Most definitely. He wouldn't take my representation, to be real, because... I mean, I, I had him on. I was trying to talk to him. He wouldn't listen to me, and I knew he wouldn't. I said, just listen to your, listen to Ben Bateman for crying out loud. I'm sure Ben yeah. Bateman's a, 
Yeah, I think he's a good attorney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm looking at this going, you know what? You, you went nuts because uh, uh, what a judge ruled against you on a traffic ticket. Mm -hmm. Then you just did a bunch of creepy stuff, but it, it's nothing too over the top. Literally, I think if you said, I will knock it off and gave an apology, you could get out of this for nothing. They don't want to put Mr. Blandino in jail for this. It's very yeah, clear. That, uh, yeah, I'm just like, is, is there something? They would have done it by now. Yeah. Yep. They would okay. have done it, like, for all the... So, uh, technically speaking, each time he refused to either be on blue jeans or come to court with the mask on, he was failing to appear for court. He could have gotten a bench warrant each of those times. The court didn't want to lock him up. Well, I think the reason why he even showed up yeah. to this one is because they, they threatened him with a bench warrant okay. if he didn't show up. That's the only reason why he's showing up to this. He's probably served more time when, like, with the competency issue when they held him for that. Yeah. He probably served more time pre-trial for this than anyone with his. I know he has a record, according to what my, or I, I let me not say that. I believe he has a record, according to what my viewers have told me. Oh, he me. does have a record. Yeah, he, and it's pretty bad. But given the charges themselves, he would probably get time served with, like, you know, a promise to stay away or something like that. Some type of diversionary program, maybe. If he just would desist and allow somebody to represent him, this case would have been over a long time ago. Yeah. But I think we've, based on what I've seen from the history that I've looked at from my series, like going from his origins, because I went through his, I found a bankruptcy um, court opinion that actually did, it had a, a and the opinion got a fact pattern of this guy's history of his first, his marriage and his kids and what happened with that. Yeah. You go from yeah, there. Yeah, I watched it. That was good. Yeah. Uh, like I said. It paints him in a bad light, but I, I will tell you what. Um, it's nothing. I mean, you know, in terms of criminal liability. It's not that big of it. Like he he did he filed documents that that screwed up his kid's house sale or whatever. Real despicable stuff. But it's not. This isn't like heavy, you know, well, class X felony going away sort of stuff. Well, he, kid, well, he did you. kidnap his kids. Yeah. Yeah, but you, even that, uh, even that. No, I'm not justifying that's a crime or whatever. But it's your own kids. That's a that's a difference in kind than kidnapping somebody else's. It, it, it's wrong. I'm not. I'm not justifying. But it's it, it, it's a different level of creepy to to go out and pluck some kids that aren't yours, it, as as opposed to you know sort of being misunderstanding and, and trying to and trying to have your own children. Yeah, that's that. The court sees it a little bit differently. They see it as they they still think it's bad. But the oh, way it's they, bad. But the it, way they it, those cases, they understand that they're custody disputes, but. Either way you look at it, okay, he has a he has a record. He doesn't have a great history, but the actus reus in this particular case, this case could have been resolved long before. Well, I think where I'm com where I'm coming from looking at this is that yes, you're right. In a sense, he I wouldn't say he's violent. There's no there's no actual history mm -hmm. of violence with him. But the things that he's done, he has he has you know messed with people's lives severely he uh oh, possibly caused uh, some severe damage with his kids i don't know what the current state of his relationship with his kids are now because they're all uh they're both i think adults by now um oh. at the same time yeah they're the as a matter of fact they're gonna he's gonna mention that he wants uh time to go see his uh what i think his oldest son get his doctorate um get his phd or something like that mm. so but the level of and that but for me when i was reading yeah the bankruptcy proceeding like he completely screwed his wife's and his new er, and, her, and her new husband's like financial lives like he completely screwed them over with that list pendants that he filed on their home for the yeah, sole purpose of preventing them from moving to south carolina with the kids Mm -hmm. And then through there, and then from there, that's when you see, uh, through the custody issues, that's where you see the seeds of why this guy has such a hate boner for the 8th Judicial District. It's because uh. of the, the family law, the family division, and because he filed motions to recuse judges in the family division to the point where the entirety of the family division in Clark County were recused or were moved away from his case. Oh, so that worked for him there. So that so at least gave him some leverage. And so he thought he was going to use that in criminal court. Right. Yep. So I don't think it's necessarily the traffic ticket that that 
the traffic ticket was probably the catalyst, but this guy has had a vendetta against this particular 8th Judicial District for a very long time, uh, given his history. Oh, got it. That Judge Bell, when I got back, back from LCC, over my objections, against my will, I said that you can't really do your competency court judge and you can't really do conditions of custody. But she nonetheless said, drop it from, she knew it was high level before. She said, I don't think that's necessary. She put it on medium and she didn't send any other conditions. I double checked that with my house arrest officer, Daniel Webb. And he said, Kim, there's no conditions on you whatsoever. And I said, well, I'll still let you know when I'm going to a sensitive area, like to the municipal court or whatever, because at municipal court, I could run into these people, Federico or St. Shannon Nordstrom. And I object to Mr. Uh, Dickerson's characterization that I'm, I don't know how you put it, didn't say obsessed with uh, Shannon Nordstrom. I've Fixated. got a file I, and my statute of limitations is running off on that. Both of these people, Federico and Nordstrom, filed frivolous temporary protective order a request oh. with the justice court and they were denied outright uh that we did have wrong you and now you're a lying you're a lying sob as many of my audience can attest to in part two okay. of my saga i did not okay. i did not showcase one of the tpo hearings admittedly uh and he while he is correct that both of them were denied one of them the one that we saw in part two the judge there through uh, Kim Blandino a bone saying, uh, and this was to Federico, the victim in this his extortion case. He wanted an additional civil TPO on top of the no contact order uh, in the criminal case. He said, if you do not um, uh, contact Federico for 30 days, I will deny the TPO. Okay. That's not a denial outright. That's the judge oh, giving him a chance. I saw that hearing. Wasn't yeah. that on video? Yeah. I saw yeah. that hearing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, they weren't denied, and it'll sit, and it'll bring it up again, saying that they're uh, the judges claim that they were frivolous. The judge didn't say anything about this thing being frivolous, or he did not deny it outright. The judge actually gave him a chance to not talk to this guy for thirty days and throw him a bone. That uh, uh, it was it wasn't only a denial. It, it it was like I'm inclined to do it, but if you can knock it off for a time period, then I won't. Right. Oh, okay. So it's a complete mischaracterization to say that this was denied. The way, yeah, the way he characterizes how the uh, making it seem like these TPO requests were frivolous, which he also mentions later on, is a complete mischaracterization. Um, Wasn't that the hearing where he was going back and forth with the petitioner, the judge, like that, the temporary judge? And mm -hmm. just being like, you know, um, he's obsessed with me. And then the other, the judge that was ruling the case was like, just leave him alone. If you just leave him yeah. alone, we'll let it go. Okay, yeah. I did watch that. I did watch that. I, I, I mentioned in the chat, like, the, the, the judge, he sounded like, um, you know, an 85-year-old Jimmy Stewart. Uh, yes. <laughs> I saw that, and you did a nice Jimmy Stewart. Oh, It was yeah. impressive. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> ...on Shannon Nordstrom, and... Uh, uh, with Jansen on the Federico one, he did that. So they've Jansen, abused process. Is. Federico, their complaining witness, lied and perjured himself. And as a matter of fact, Dickerson and Melanie Marlin were. I don't think that any of this is relevant. So I'm. Yeah, bear in mind, this was about the motion to remand, not having anything to do with it. I'm yeah. going to stop you right there. I am going to deny the state's motion to remand you. I'm going to allow you to stay on house arrest. However, I disagree that there were no special conditions. At no time was that no contact order lifted. So I just want to make sure you understand you are to have no contact with Mr. Federico and or Ms. Shannon Nordstrom. Do you understand Federico. that? Yeah, there's okay. Federico. No first star in there. It's not Federico, it's Federico. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for correcting me, Federico. Okay, and so Mr. Dickerson, you can prepare the order on that. And then so, um, is a, It's just a, a stay away from Federico and Nordstrom, right? <laughs> I could go to other judges, right? <laughs> that is correct. Okay. That is correct. I do not believe that the no contact order was ever lifted. 
So, um, Mr. Dickerson, I think the next motion, uh, let's see, um, the state's motion regarding his self-representation. Um, that's correct, Your Honor. Uh, as you'll recall, this motion was originally filed um, back in November of 2020. And at that point in time, it was heard, uh, the court in December, seven, December 17th of 2020, essentially held the motion in abeyance uh, and indicated that you weren't going to grant it at that time. You were going to wait and assess how the defendant behaved going forward in this case. The state uh, has since that time filed uh, three supplements to that motion, uh, detailing every time the conduct that the defendant has shown throughout the course of this particular case and uh, outside of this case as well. Um, that includes what we'd previously been discussing uh, of the letter that he sent to the state indicating that he's going to go conduct this covert surveillance upon the victim and uh, municipal court judge Nordstrom. In, in addition to that, uh, after that January 2021 letter, we have a series of motions to disqualify that have been filed. And here we uh, go. That begins uh, March 8th, 2021. That is what I've called in my moving papers the third motion to disqualify or the fifth motion to disqualify. April 14th, 2021, the sixth motion to disqualify. April 22nd, 2021, the seventh motion to disqualify. May 6, 2021, the eighth motion to disqualify. Uh, May 18th, 2021, email to your court staff that was extremely disparaging. Uh, August 10th, 2021, Judge Wilson issued his order denying the there it is. what he termed the third motion to disqualify against you, Your Honor. He also indicated within his order that all of these motions that the defendant had been filing were in fact illegitimate and they were only filed to gain a tactical advantage this and goes on to my analysis of the abuse of process that the defendant has continued to show during this time that this state's motion to revoke his right to self-representation has been held in abeyance uh, and so we filed this third supplement to the motion to revoke his right to self-representation we filed that on August 13th, 2020. In there, you see that I've also indicated under uh, Indiana v. Edwards, the extreme concerns that we see as far as the defendant's diagnosis of having a personality disorder, uh, specifically a personality disorder that includes obsessive, schizotypal, and prominent narcissistic traits, looking to the... Well, okay. I, I, well I, see, obje I would object to that. I would object to that. TBH. Do you mind if I say why? No, go for, no, go for it. I, I want to know. Oh, and so if I was Mr. Blandino's counsel, I would object to that because first of all, you're disparaging him. His, if he's competent to stand trial, then you bringing up him filing whatever motions that he's filing and then trying to impugn him through his mental health issues is like really inflammatory and almost like super disrespectful in my opinion there are people that have those mental health issues and don't present in court this way so that's not necessarily you know what i'm saying like it's like you can't have it both ways you can't say you know he's competent to stand trial but disregard everything he's saying because he's a crazy person you know that's not fair um the his motions have no merit there's no question about that the motions have no merit and the court should disregard them but don't i don't allow opposing counsel to impugn my clients like that and talk about their mental health in a disparaging type of way. And I'd, I'd all, I would go in on him for saying that just now. My response to that would be the, the district attorney is use, is trying to note the personality disorders as an example of his, what he's doing, which is to file these constant motions to disqualify and his abject refusal to accept um, the rulings of the court whenever he is told no. Um, and I would say that, that the reason why he's bringing it up is to exemplify his inability to control himself or to even accept, a, basically to 
he will not take no for an answer. And the reason why he seems to not take, want to take no for an answer is as a result is in part do, can be attributed to his diagnosis. Um, and that, I think that's the reason why the district attorney is bringing up um, his diagnosis as this is why he, unlike other p possible pro se litigants, just refuses to accept the order of the court because as he'll point out, the moment that a judge says no, he immediately files uh, a renewed motion, like literally the next day. And I think that's where, they're, where, where the district attorney is coming from. Yeah, I guess I would just like want the court to caution him that there's a slippery slope there where you don't want the court making rulings that someone's uh, motion should be disregarded or denied simply because the person has some type of mental health disorder. That can be very problematic because a lot of people have mental health disorders or personality disorders. That doesn't mean that their motion should be disregarded. The motion should be disregarded because on its face, it's insufficient. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, insuffi it's insufficient on the law. It's insufficient on the facts. It's irrelevant to the issue that they're proceeding on today but his own like unless they're going to say he's incompetent to stand trial i don't think his mental health is really is really relevant i get I, what you're saying he's crazy right that's what they're saying he's, well, he's crazy so disregard him but you can't you can't make a finding based on and that. i will and i will note that blandino actually does bring up that point uh bring up uh, a point in your favor later on here what? mayo clinic's definition of what that entails we all get an idea of exactly what is going on here and uh, what the problem is. If you see that a personality disorder is a rigid and on pat unhealthy pattern of thinking. Uh, and then from there, getting into the typology of his personality disorder, we see exactly why he continues down this path of the abusive process and uh, refusing to acknowledge orders of the court, specifically the order of Judge Wilson, which has already indicated that his filings were illegitimate because his response there too is then the next, in the next days, August 18th, 2021, he then files his ninth and 10th motions to disqualify, including a motion to disqualify all of the district court judges in the eighth judicial district, which was specifically referenced by Judge Wilson in his order as being one of the bases for him determining that these were illegitimate motions that he was filing. And then to go further, a few days after that, August 23rd, 2021, as of yesterday, he's now filed his 11th motion to disqualify. This is a continuing abusive process that the defendant is going to continue down. Uh, we are in a position right now where it has become clear it's become clear under Ferretta that the plain terms of the, the U.S. Supreme Court's seminal decision on self-representation provides that this does not provide a right to abuse the dignity of the courtroom. It does not provide a right to avoid compliance with the relevant rules and procedural and su substantive law. And it does not provide a right to engage in serious obstructionist misconduct, which is exactly what the defendant is doing. And case in point, when we started off this hearing today, the defendant, after the court having issued minute orders denying his motions to disqualify begins this proceeding today by saying, Your Honor, you do not have jurisdiction to hear this case and not proceed today because it evidences exactly what he has been doing. These are his obstructionist misconduct to delay this case and file these motions only for a tactical advantage to achieve that delay. Based upon that, I think he's left this court in with no other option but to revoke his right to self-representation because he continues to abuse the process and it's clear that he's going to continue from this point forward. Okay. Are you done, Mr. Dickerson? I am, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Blandino? Great job, okay. Mr. Dickerson. Well, he's lying through his teeth again. I'm really <laughs> unfortunate that... <laughs> okay. That was the best been, part. He's been told... Multiple, already? He's been told multiple times, like, it. please do not just say that the other party's lying it's not necessarily proper decorum I, I i feel like the best way of saying you know the the facts on the record um 
uh, belie the uh, other party's assertions. There's a, a more tactful way of saying that somebody is not yeah. being fully truthful than to say, he, this, this motherfucker's a liar, you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, he, and he violates He, he was arguing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it wasn't even yeah. stating facts. He was oh, making an Mike argument, yeah. laying out a case. It wasn't, you know. Mike, Mike, Mike. What? Yeah. What? what? We lost. I lost everybody. What the hell? I can hear Mike. I can hear you. I I'm here. I'm on. Um, what what I do? What? Hold on. <laughs> can you hear us now? Yep. Uh, you there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, well, you know it was my damn fault. That was my fault. I muted myself. Oh. <laughs> Mike was making some great points. There. Quality, quality presentation from Artie's Corporate Fiction. I apologize, Mike. Please continue. No, I. We're all good. Let's keep going. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh. And Dino, I am not going to permit you to call the attorneys or anyone a liar. I okay. just want to hear yes. what you want to say in opposition. Do not you... make disparaging remarks about the district attorney or anyone else involved. It's not appropriate. Well, would you prefer the term of candor? Is that appropriate? No, I don't want you to say anything to the district attorney. I want you to well, oppose the motion. Sorry. In fact, Judge Wilson did not say I did. He said he was concerned that he concerned that Mr. Blandino Thing. And he used the term concern to, to gain a tactical advantage or to okay. delay the. But the thing is, he, uh, Mr. Dickerson misleads the court when it says 10 motions to disqualify. It's this is part one of the main factors into which I went into investigating judicial corruption and misconduct, especially in the 8th Judicial District Court. The court does not want to follow. NRS 1.235, they want to make the law up as they go. All the, uh, for decades now, they, uh, they don't follow, when, when the motion to disqualify is filed, only a challenge can be brought within five days. If the judge decides that they're not going to challenge the motion to disqualify, it is their obligation to immediately transfer the, the case. And so, I want to I want to note for the record that in Blandino's initial motions to disqualify, which were ultimately heard by just Judge Wilson, uh, they were against Judge Levitt and on another judge. They did file their opposition timely, but they hadn't been. But they had the those motions weren't even heard while Blandino continued to file. Uh, uh, motions to disqualify against the same judges in many respects. So I feel like it would be a waste of everybody's time for a judge to continuously file an objection to uh, a motion to disqualify if there was already one that's on the table that hasn't even been heard yet. So I feel like Bandino's trying to be cute by saying, no, they didn't file an opposition. They filed an opposition to your first motion to disqualify, which hadn't been heard yet. The, the fact that they're not going to be redundant and file the same objection to an emotion to disqualify over and over and over again does not mean that, oh, they, they went unopposed and therefore, you know, we, we can we can move the on. The other thing that struck me is, is he claims he's lying. He's like, well, he's misleading the court saying I filed 10 motions. I'm like, we have a record. I, I mean, I don't think I don't know the prosecutor, but he looks like a straight arrow. Like, I don't see him as a liar. He he's looking at the filings. He counts them up. You know, he's like, all right, I got 10 of these things. How is that a lie? It's but, verifiable. Uh, is he saying it's misleading because, you know, he filed five of them against one judge and therefore they should all be counted as one? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, the prosecutor doesn't need to lie on him because, like, the truth is insane in and of itself, right? And, so and the, and the docket, and I've seen the docket myself. He, there's yeah. a. Mm. And then the yeah. thing is, if they do file, yeah. file a challenge, it's supposed to be by a party uh, heard by a party agreed upon by the parties, and if they're not to can't come to an agreement, then by a judge appointed. But the eighth judicial district trying to become its own legislature in essence says, no, we're going to have the chief judge hear all of these motions to disqualify. So it's been 
Judge Bell, now the current chief judge. Before that, it was Mr. Judge Mr. Do you have anything that you want to say in response to the state motion? They're asking well, me to revoke your self-representation. Every one of these motions to disqualify have been based on facts and evidence that Kim has that he cannot have a fair trial by any eight judicial district court judges. This judge can, as you can take judicial notice of in the Marlon Brown case, I am going to have to call multiple judges as witnesses. And in the Marlon Brown case... Okay, that has nothing to do with this case. If you don't want to talk about this particular motion... I do remember watching your video, Nat, and, you, and, you, and I remember you dressed this down. I was like, they are not going to be called in as witnesses in your criminal trial. It's like they're no. completely irrelevant. <laughs> Never going to happen. Never going to happen. Oh. I will just rule on the pleadings. But it well, is very clear to me that, you know, you do not want to follow the rules. You don't want to follow the rules. And you continually... Um, you know, do this obstructionist behavior and try to impede and obstruct the state from moving forward. You were able to obstruct the state from being heard on their motion to remand you for over a year based on these motions to disqualify. It's not sure. right. If you don't want to follow the rules, I'm going to revoke your self-representation. I want to make sure you understand self-representation is not absolute. If you do not comply with the rules, I will revoke your self-representation. You will be appointed an attorney, and your attorney will litigate this case, not you. Do you understand that? Well, I'd like you to point out to do me, you Judge. Do understand that? Well, did, well, did I not follow? I don't know. I'm the one that followed NRS 12301.235, and, and, and at no time did Judge Wilson state, that my motions to disqualify were frivolous. He said it was uh, to gain a tactical advantage. <laughs> he only said that they were made for a tactical advantage. They didn't say they were frivolous. <laughs> Come on, man. Did he file a motion on on that Wilson on the out of court judge or out of county judge, or did he or did think, he let that one judge go? I think he did. I think he did. Oh, uh, I, I, on, I, 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 I can't, I can I cannot say here for certain because it's, it's been a, a bit about a week or a week and a half since I saw the docket, but I think he did file a motion to disqualify Judge Wilson himself. <laughs> like the whole point of these, the reason that's ridiculous is because you're trying to exclude the judges that are in that county, that are in that jurisdiction. Right. Wilson was. You get a judge from outside the jurisdiction and you try to exclude them as well. Wilson. Can I just go. Wilson was chosen by the Nevada Supreme Court, and then Blandino disparaged the, the Nevada Supreme Court, telling them that they needed to be removed from the bench. Wow. <laughs> this, the audacity. <laughs> this guy, really, I, I, yeah. Not made in good faith. I believe that you filed these last motions um, to disqualify, to prevent the state of Nevada from having their motions heard. And you were successful in preventing them from having their motions heard. You was. And then when it gets back on calendar, even though your motion has been denied, you simply file another one. They do this like mid-entry. Uh, mid yeah, I mean, they've got this great production value. Again, you know? yes. I, again, shout out to our Nevada judges. Our Nevada uh, judges. For this stuff. The best. Best. Have to um, appear in the courtroom. If you come in the RJC, you have to wear a mask. Otherwise, and let, me finish, let me finish. Otherwise, we allow people to appear via blue jeans. Every other person that comes to the RJC complies with that. You refuse to comply with that. You wouldn't even appear via blue jeans because apparently you don't have to follow the rules. That is not true. You are required to follow the rules. If you don't talk, don't talk. If you want to appear in the Regional Justice Center, you will be required to follow the rules and wear a mask. Otherwise, you can appear via blue jeans, like every other person that has business in the RJC. I don't make the rules, I just follow the rules. And I'm not gonna allow you to just simply disregard the rules. Can I rebut? 
Yes, I got a note from a doctor. I appeared on August 10th before the Board of Examiners with Judge, uh, I mean, with the governor. I was in the morning. I was six feet away from him without a mask, and he was no problem with that. This is on YouTube. The court can take judicial notice. I showed him. Okay. <laughs> His staff, this doctor's note, and he allowed me to make public comments twice at the beginning and at the end with this doctor's note that I cannot wear a mask. In addition to the medical... You appear via blue jeans. That's fine. Huh? I mean, you were appearing via, um, via blue jeans today, and that's <laughs> but, fine. But for I the mean, last year, you have refused to appear even by blue jeans. And you stand outside the courthouse without a mask on, and you demand to be let in, and you have to be told you cannot come in. Okay, okay, real quick. Oh, this is true. Yes, it's very true. Uh, real quick for the for the audience, Blue Jeans is the teleconferencing software that the state of Nevada uh, courts use. It's called Blue Jeans. I uh, know. Uh, I feel like most everybody else they've used Microsoft Teams, Zoom. Uh, I think those are the two big ones that I feel like most people tend to use, right? I get. I use a lot of WebEx too. I don't and know why. Oh, and WebEx as well. Uh, but yes, uh, Nevada State of Nevada uses a software uh, teleconferencing software called Blue Jeans. That's what they're referring to. So again, I just what? want to make sure you understand. You don't want to wear a mask. You have a medical condition. I don't need to know about it. You can appear via blue jeans. That's fine with me. I have absolutely no problem with that. I have a problem with blue jeans. I can hardly make out your face at all. I can't tell what's going on. With your facial expression. I need to have feedback. I've got. I'm, I'm 66 years old in October, and I have okay, problems. I am not going to argue with you. These are the rules, and that's what you can do. Okay, it is what it is. I'm not going to let you just bypass the rules. You are not above the rules. And again, I want to make sure you understand. Self-representation is not absolute. You have obstructed and impeded for over a year by your yes. refusal to follow the rules. And then when the state comes close to having their motions heard by the court, you simply file another motion to disqualify, even though for an entire year there's basically nothing going on. So again, wow. I just want to make sure you understand you are not entitled to ignore the rules. Your behavior is record. disruptive, and you obstruct and impede. If you continue down this path, I will revoke your right to represent yourself. Do you understand that? Well, I I'm understand what you're saying, quick. but I... I oh. hmm? Yeah. I'm so sorry. Don't go ahead. Okay, so this goes for Mr. Blandino and anyone else in general who wants to be... What this court has deemed Mr. Blandino to be is a vexatious litigant. He says he's 66 years old and he doesn't understand blue jeans. And I get that. But he is, from the court record, drawing out this proceeding longer than what it needs to be with all these motions to recuse the judges without any real basis for these motions to recuse. Life is short. You have been here for 66 years. You don't have that much time left. We only live for, for so long. Please stop wasting your time in court and get this case over with. Like, please. Like, you, you're really going to spend your golden years, you know, like 70s and up is basically your golden years. You're going to waste your golden years in and out of the district court of the 8th Judicial Circuit. It's just not worth it. I honestly think this is this is part of his identity now, is being in the courtroom. And yeah, he loves it. With, I, think he, I think he loves this. Life is too short. Find <laughs> something else. You know, there's people that collect... Um, gold and like metals and stuff on the beach and they put out that little like you know move to a beach town and use a metal detector and go collect yeah, treasure absolutely find something else to do this is not fun don't do this <laughs> you know, i represent people that are charged with really really serious offenses and god they want to get out of court why are you prolonging your experience with court i don't know i don't i, I, I think i uh, i do think it's part of his personality to be argumentative i uh, i think that's he thrives on it, and I think that's part of it. Oppositional defiant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Respectfully, I'm following the rules, and I'm following the statutes, and it's it's the eight judicial district court judges that aren't following the statute. Okay. All right. Again, I just it it sounds like you understand.
also i also i think i mentioned it before i think he has like a, a savior complex in, uh, that he thinks he's 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 on a crusade to right wrongs and fight for justice and i think that's also part of it in my opinion Hmm. And me. I don't know. Because I'm not going to allow you to continue to make a mockery of the court system. Do you understand? I understand what you're saying. Okay. So if you continue with this obstructionist and impeding behavior and refusal to follow the rules, I will revoke your self representation. Do you well, have I any questions about that? I, I don't hear any specificity on what you're just conclusion in a conclusory fashion saying I'm abusing the thing by filing these motions to disqualify. And 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 contrary to what Judge Wilson states, it's on the record. I am sincere that I don't believe I can get any kind of fair trial with any eight judicial district court judge. And Marlon Brown was allowed to have all of those recused and he had Kosach assigned to his petition for writ of habeas corpus. Again. We don't think you have to follow the rules. No. So I just want to make sure you understand. So at this point, I'm going to deny their request to revoke your self-representation, but I want to make sure you understand there is enough in this record right now for me to revoke your self-representation. But if there's enough, so if you continue deny down it. this road, I'm going to revoke your self-representation. <coughs> so I suggest you follow the rules, and that you stop with this obstructionist behavior. Oh, so the next right. one is, let's see. Um, Can I make a quick oh, record on that, Your Honor? You may. The defendant misstated the ruling of Judge Wilson specifically, and I quote, Judge Wilson says, I conclude Mr. Blandino's disqualification claims are not legitimate that they were made to gain tactical advantages in his criminal case before Judge Levitt. This is something the defendant needs to understand as he moves forward. It's clear today, listening to him, that uh, he intends to continue down that path despite the court's ruling. Uh, so I just want to make it very clear that our position is he should still have his representation revoked today despite the warning. Your Honor's found that there's the basis for it, that he's committed serious obstruction mis obstructionist misconduct. It's really just giving him another opportunity for another years long delay based upon these continued motions to disqualify which are illegitimate okay well i, I can assure you i will not let it go on for a year act on that okay. judge so if, oh. if i take this issue of the motions to disqualify which now i have a factual record because they won't they're saying they're not a fact finder so would i be not following the rules if i appeal this denial to the Nevada Supreme Court, uh, not appeal, but by extraordinary oh writ. I mean, am I going to be charged with, <laughs> with not following the rules if I say, I think you're wrong? I would like to point out, <laughs> oh my God. for the record, on the record, oh and let the record show, he filed at least four or more um, uh, extraordinary writs to the Nevada Supreme Court, and they've shut him down each and every time. Of course. I, I, you know what? I'm impressed. I'm impressed. You could, I mean, I'm in Illinois. You could file, you could file a writ to the Illinois Supreme Court, and I assure you, you're not going to hear anything for five years. <laughs> no I, I don't care who you are. Yeah. In my in my state, I don't think that that's an, even an option. I, I think maybe you could file an interlocutory appeal, but it's you can, so limited. Yes, to what you file it on. Same with so, New Jersey. Yeah, you can Is follow. That, oh, okay. It's very, very limited in New Jersey. Interlocutory appeal. Yeah. I, I just I, I didn't expect this. I mean, I learned about Nevada because of Michael McDonald. And I started learning like, wow, this is a much more liberal state. I didn't know. Nevada, ju judicially speaking, is a far more liberal state than my state of Maryland, which is a, a, a it's considered to be a blue state. Sometimes you get a Republican governor every once in a while, like we have Hogan right now. But my goodness, they give so much like leeway to the defense litigant in either the criminal or the civil proceeding that we do not get here. Like this extraordinary writ, that's, we never would get that. It's over, yeah. it's done mm -hmm. for you. And, and uh, to be totally clear, I practiced all across this entire state, right? From when I first started, my state, when I first started practicing on the Eastern shore, which is more conservative. Now I'm in more of a like a liberal area. 
I practice in Washington County, which is more conservative as well. There's no way a judge would not have locked him up by now. Like there's absolutely <laughs> no way. He would have been so locked up, but he's getting away with so much. And so did Mr. McDonald. And that just makes me think that like, they're, they, they're just far more lenient, you know? I mean, I, I have to, because, and, and I think to myself, like, why are they doing that? Because it's not as if they're in a, in a podunk County where there's nothing going on. They're in Clark County. This is Las Vegas. This is the largest Las city. Vegas. Yeah, they so, get a lot. So yep. it's not as if this is like uh, uh you know a, a rural county in Nevada, but so I I do wonder like you know, why they think that they have they that they, they have this much time on their docket to allow him to continue because again as we just met went through the first hour of the show he went through at least five different hearings where he refused to show up and or file a motion to disqualify and they, they just pushed it forward. We are now over a year after he was released and we are only just now getting to um, the state's initial motions from the previous year. I really think it's because it's a more lenient jurisdiction because I mean, obviously civil is not criminal. They're not one right. the same. And Mike is more understanding of civil procedure than I am, but I watched not just Michael McDonald. There was one where it was a woman that was the um, non-custodial parent and she committed some like egregious acts during the pendency of the the custody case they i don't i can't think of her name but maybe some of your viewers will know they were an interracial couple she was black he was white and she, he had custody of the child and she was horrible like she was like when she got back into a corner on her not allowing the child to see the father she was like oh um he's not even the dad anyway right like she was like terrible right but the court gave her like if anyone has a kid that they don't have custody of or if anyone has like a a shared custody agreement she would be like the worst mom ever as far as court is concerned they were so lenient with her and like in my state they would have stripped her of visitation stripped her of custody by now based on the type of testimony that she had and they were just so lenient and i just think it's the like the culture of that court mm -hmm. it, it, it is it's it's a leftover of wild west culture that where they're trying they're like less government. They're like they don't want to be in. They they really don't want to be intrusive. Mm -hmm. Where where they, you know out east they love to be intrusive. You know they're oh. they're, they're all big government all, all day long. Yeah. And and it, and it's an yeah it's an odd break, but it but it has it has some strange results. Yeah yeah yeah. Oh, I found it I, immensely entertaining. Sorry. No, it's okay. no, 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 no. I get that. No, I get it. I think an extraordinary relief because here's the order that they just issued. It said, as it, it appears, they just that, issued any funds on filing a new one. Motion to disqualify the district judge has been resolved, such that any motions concerning this house arrest and trial can now move forward. We can we conclude that our extraordinary intervention is not warranted at this time. So that means that now, that if you're <laughs> with this record now, I need to go by extraordinary writ petition back to the Supreme Court and say, hey, look. <laughs> You know, I've got legitimate things. Wilson says I didn't cite specific facts, but he didn't even cite Ripple versus State. That's the controlling law on this. I'm sorry, he's Ripple. Disputing, v. So he's disputing Wilson already. There's right. not uh, actual or implied bias. There only has to be the risk of intolerable risk of unconstitutional bias. And I think I've shown that clearly. How? So I think I. I <laughs> but, the problem is, but, but the problem is how? Literally nothing has been done since Wilson issued that order. And he's saying like, oh, now I have a factual record. She just denied the state's motion for remand. They uh, Once again, they ruled in your favor. And now you're trying to say that you now have enough of a factual record to demonstrate bias against this judge. The, again, this is the kind of guy that will... He will not take no for an answer, but he'll also t he will not take yes for an answer either. Like <laughs> this is his this is this is his mo. All right, but I nobody else does that has ruled on these motions. So again, do what you think is appropriate. But again, I'm not going to allow you to obstruct and impede these proceedings. proceedings because the state of Nevada they're entitled to a fair trial and fair proceedings as well. So again, you've been warned. I think the record is clear. I believe I'm required to warn you that your self-representation will be revoked. I think the record is clear that I have 
made that warning and instructed you that I will not hesitate to revoke your self-representation. Can I ask for a stay of proceedings? So the next one is, I'm sorry, what? Can I ask for a stay of these proceedings pending my petition to the Nevada Supreme Court on the motion to disqualify this issue? They said no. that they're there at once no. you get any, any request for a stay is denied. No. Okay, can I get that in writing so that I've got the denied writing? First of all, I didn't grant any motion or order, but I'm telling you right now, there is no stay that is going to be issued today pursuant to anything that I'm doing. So the next motion is your motion, Mr. Blandino. Okay, okay, get ready for this. Because this is going to be this is going to be interesting here. No, it's your motion for release from GPS monitoring. I don't um, have a motion. Do you, do you have dates? Yeah, you do have a motion. You want to go see your son Andrew in California? Well, I, I didn't phrase that as a motion. I was just uh, that was a notice to the court that there's an emergency thing I need to do, and. Uh, okay. If I make a motion to you, it undercuts my argument that you could be fair and unbiased. I don't think you Okay, you're... let me tell you something else. If you continue to refuse that this court has jurisdiction, then I will revoke your self-representation. Because in my opinion, that is continuing to impede and obstruct. You can say... Basically, what he's trying to say is, no, I didn't put this as a motion. This is, uh, he said, is a notice and demand to let him out of GPS. Also still a motion. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, but, but he says like, no, I'm telling you that I want to go see my son. Let me go. Uh, you shouldn't actually have a say in it. I'm just letting you know that that's what I want. And because yeah. he says, if, if I give you the option to motion on it, that I am undermining my argument that you could be fair and impartial. But basically he's, oh, again, he's once again, he's... <laughs> challenging the authority of the court here which is what I'm, <laughs> I'm a little too tipsy for that argument that's ridiculous <laughs> i don't agree with judge wilson's order or judge bell's order or the other i mean it's been denied four times now you can say you do not agree with that and you can file an appeal and do whatever you think is appropriate but you cannot continue to refuse to acknowledge that this court has jurisdiction. Well, I, I will. Then I think you're still uh, have the. There's a risk of bias. I want to see you resign okay. or. Remove. So your motion, and I'm going to tell you another thing. You are not permitted to communicate with my office. All you you missed that part where he said that I want to. He the, 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 it cut off, but he's going to bring it up again. Okay. What, what he just said to the judge, and she's not going to lie. All these emails, you have been told several times not to communicate with my office. It oh, is yeah, inappropriate a problem with to too. communicate with my office. If there is anything that you feel like you have to communicate to the court, I ask that you put it in writing, send it in the mail, or have Mr. Bateman um, communicate with this court. All of these emails that you have been sending over here. I wasn't even reading them. I became aware of some of them when I read the state's opposition. And apparently they've all been- No, 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 no. You can't do that. Those are ex parte uh, um, communications. Absolutely. It's completely unallowed. You mm -hmm. know, and this, this could be so helpful to some of your viewers because mm -hmm. I have people that are like my own clients that have made this mistake. What, a so, uh, talking directly to the judge? Talking directly to the judge, yeah. You're trying to get uh, an ex yep. parte So ex parte, you know, would be just you and the judge, or your judge can take, take it in camera review or something, but it can't be ex parte. It can't be only with one party of the case. It has to be with both. The judge can't be showing any type of favoritism, so they can't talk with only one party. They have to talk to both of them at the same time and, like, let them know what both parties are saying. So anything that you say to the judge is going to be disclosed to the other side so that's not an ex parte communication because that is disallowed. So a lot of the times, you know, a, clients will agree with their judge's course, of, their attorney's course of action. So they'll submit an ex parte communication to the judge saying, hey, I told my attorney to file this motion. They didn't follow this. So this is what I want you to do. Oh, judges, no. Oh. It happens. Yeah, it happens all the time. It's so sad because a lot of the oh. times, 
people are making admissions in those ex parte orders that are incriminating. Ah. And the court has a duty to turn it over to the other side. So they're not like just holding it to themselves. So guys, if you ever have an attorney, please do not write directly to the judge. You may not be, you, know, you can always find a way to escalate beyond what your attorney wants. Your attorney is in charge of what motions to file. That's their determination. You should really trust their judgment. But if you don't, sending it to the judge directly it's just like sending it to the prosecutor because the prosecutor, the judge can't have an ex parte conversation with you. They have to disclose to the prosecutor. So Mr. Blandino represents himself. Anything to the judge, the judge has to send it to the opposing side and let them know about it because they can't rule on his stuff all on its own. So him sending things to the court being like, you better do it this way, allegedly, and you better do it that way. If you don't, I'm you know, gonna file this motion and that motion. It can be seen as threatening, number one. But number two, it doesn't just stay between him and the judge. The other side hears about it. And if it's incriminating, the prosecutor can file additional charges on the defendant. Oh. You never want to communicate with the judge on your own. It's just not a good idea. Oh, my God. It happens in so many Maybe. of my cases. I, 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 you know, I didn't even think about that. I honestly yeah. didn't even think that it, that, that would be a common or not uncommon thing that even Th with this representation is a typical, that they'll just continue to file motions yeah. basically behind your back or just go over your head it's so bad it's so bad i'm sorry mike what were you gonna say well he, they just don't understand the basic stuff all the time so there he's doing all this fancy stuff and i'm doing a mandamus to the supreme court and all this stuff but you don't know about ex parte communications you don't know that you need to file a, a supporting affidavit with your motion to to disqualify you don't know basic basic stuff that any attorney would know that right. that's doing this and, and so they see they just see these little pieces but the the big picture is not there and they're just wrong and it's so hard to explain to them yeah it's part of the record so the record will reflect we have left side files many emails that you have sent the court that are ex-party communication they are inappropriate and an attorney would never be allowed <laughs> to send those type of emails. I need to no respond. Do not communicate with my chambers. There is nothing respond. you have to communicate with us. I need to respond to that, Judge. While there's a motion to disqualify pending, you are a party in that collateral action in which no. I have by statute the right to at least ask, at the very least ask to have a judge that could hear that. And if we would have had a judge to hear this, months ago rather than uh trying to go through this uh Villani and then uh jones and alf and all this kind of thing over the years if we had been able if you had been able to agree well let's have a judge from another district then we wouldn't have had all this and i could have gone to the nevada supreme court quicker so my position is that by you not following uh nrs 1.235 and to agree upon a judge bell was already recused she okay. put and again that i am talking about Again, this is kind of what you do. <laughs> she was talking about don't communicate with my chambers, yeah, and now you're going back to the motion to disqualify. <laughs> yeah. And he thinks he's going to make an end run around the district court altogether and go directly to the appellate court, which I think from there he was saying is the, the Supreme Court. I'm not really sure. He, I'm not he, sure he, what he, he wants to skip the appellate, uh, the uh, their appellate division. He wants to go straight to, uh, the, to Supreme the Supreme Court. court. Yeah. Okay, I thought I was hearing that right. Sir, you still okay? So ah, what have I done? You, oh, oh no! Oh, we're good. Then we wouldn't. Oh, we're good. Okay. We're good. Sorry. If you recuse those judges in your district, in the eighth district, you'll just get judges in another district, but are that are on the same level as those judges. You don't skip directly to the Supreme Court because then after that, then you're gonna have to go to your appellate division, and then whatever second appellate division, and then the Supreme Court. So. It's not going to turn out the way that you want it to be. You're not going to be able to get around, make an end run around the trial court altogether. Even if it's a valid um, recusal, it will have to be that you go to a trial court of a different district, not no trial court at all. And I think that's what he's trying to do. Well, and I, I think I'll ultimately, um, my opinion is, is that it won't matter even if they do get a judgment of a different district. There's nothing in the record in his history that leads me to believe that unless he gets everything that he wants, and even sometimes when he does get what he wants, yeah. he will file a motion to revoke the judge if they if they even 
sniff, if he even sniffs that they're going to rule against him, he will file a motion to object <coughs> and impugn bias against them for the simple fact that they ruled against him. Like that, that based on his history, based on what's going on now in this case, that is his MO. And there's no judge out there that's going to like be acceptable to him. Unless if they give him the everything. Supreme Court of the United States, he's going to move to recuse the judges in the Supreme Court of the United States. That's what he's going to do. Yeah. Like there is no, so there's no higher court in the land, and he'll still probably move to recuse those people. Probably. <laughs> I could have had all this, and I could have gone to the Nevada Supreme Court quicker. So my position is that by you not following. <laughs> Uh, NRS 1.235, and to agree upon a judge, Bell was already recused. She okay. put and again, on the I am talking about, again, this is kind of what you do. I am talking about don't communicate with my office, and you you say you want to respond to that, and you say something completely I think, well, you're a, on the motion to disqualify, <laughs> it's not inappropriate to contact you. The statute, there is no motion to disqualify. And here's the thing I'm going to tell you again. Do not contact my office. Okay? Do not attempt to have ex party communications. If there's anything that you need to communicate, you can put it in writing. You can send it to the court through the mail, CC in the other side, or you can have Mr. Bateman communicate with the court. But all this ex party communication, like, I don't care what you think of me. So stop reducing it to writing. And sending it to the court. I object to ex parte. They were copied. The DA was copied. Everybody else was copied. So it's not ex parte because they were not. They were given knowledge of okay. this, and they. Had I'm telling you, don't communicate with my office anymore. Okay, it's fine, but it's not. Ex it's abusive gonna and it's it. harassment. So you need to stop doing it. Okay. If you don't want me to hear your motion to release you from GPS monitoring, can you let me know that? Because it's on calendar for today, and I was inclined to Under rule on it. But if you don't want a ruling on it, that's fine. Oh, I'm saying I would be undercutting my own argument. There was no motion. I put it in, I think, as a notice and demand. And I've got okay. an emergency. Uh, do you want me to take it off calendar? Well, no, I don't. I'm not <laughs> saying I want you to do anything there. I want you to resign from the case. I want you to resign from the bench. Now, from the bench? that... That's what I was waiting oh, for you, waiting for you to listen to. Oh, I missed that. Imagine that so an attorney saying that in open court to a judge. Oh, and when you're pro se, it's like you're an attorney. That's how the court should see it, as though you're represented by counsel. That's how you're representing yourself. That is so disrespectful. I want you to resign from the bench. Who are you? Mm -hmm. All she's doing is just, and she's been so lenient and kind to him. I'm yeah. going to be quiet because I'm a little bit tipsy. It makes me too talkative. It's okay. I'm sorry. No, but, but, the, but that, that right there, that's what I was, I was asking you to wait for because, because he previously, he, they misspoke. He didn't, um, his mic come, uh, communication cut out, but he had already actually said, and everybody missed it until I just did just now that he already said before that he wants her to resign, but his mic cut out. So everybody missed it. But now he just says it out right here. All right, All right, Mr. Blandino, I'm telling you right now, you're going to get your self-representation revoked before this hearing's over. I mean, it just appears as though you just refuse to follow the rules or accept that the court has jurisdiction. It is totally inappropriate to say what you just said. Well, you said, uh, you asked what I wanted. I, 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 I want to have a judge that's unbiased. Well, you wanted to ask what I wanted. I that I can present a motion to, to, uh, to uh, be, be able to go visit my son. But I don't have that, and it would undercut my argument if I thought I believe that you were unbiased. I believe you're still biased, and there's a risk of bias with you. So I can't follow, I can, and I, that's why I didn't put it in as a motion. You know, okay, you don't feel um, bad for saying my, that. My you misunderstanding. My misunderstanding. It was on the calendar today. So I will vacate defendant's emergency ex parte motion for release from GPS monitoring. Wait a and minute. And I'll what? make sure the record is <laughs> Wait, clear. <what? laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> if there's any, any appeal to the Supreme Court that I was willing to rule on this motion and you said you didn't want the court to it, rule on it. 
granted to Judge yeah. Wilson. Judge Wilson did have the authority to do that. I, or it was Gregory. It was no, he Gregory. didn't. You should look at the order appointing him. He did not. Okay. It was he, Greg, Is there Greg, anything else? Greg. I don't think there's anything else. There's two other motions on too. Okay, but those are all. Like defendant's motion. Oh, I also wanted to indicate that the reason why it took so long is that um, Mr. Blandino filed another motion to disqualify this court. Mm-hmm. Okay, nope. then it goes nope. to Judge Bell. Then Judge Bell assigned it to Judge Jones. Mm -hmm. Mr. Blandino promptly filed a motion to disqualify Ms. Jones. Mm -hmm. Then when it went from Judge Jones to Judge Alf, he promptly filed a motion to disqualify Judge Alf. Yep. It was abundantly clear that it didn't matter who Judge Bell assigned that motion to. Mr. Blandino was going to file another um, motion to disqualify and that's why she sought guidance from Justice Hardesty in the Nevada Supreme Court to get a judge assigned to hear the motion to disqualify. So that is why it took so long, because Mr. Blandino kept uh, moving to disqualify every judge that was assigned the motion to disqualify. Which is well, consistent with the position that uh, all the eight judicial district court judges okay. should be disqualified in this matter, because I'm investigating all of you. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go into Kim's world. You should be disqualified, but you should resign from the bench. That's that's a bit far, even for you, don't you think, Kim? Come on. I mean, again, again, based on my understanding of his history, that that's par for the course. This is also, I mean, this is also a guy who, in open court, accused the prosecutor and the judge of having uh, a romantic relationship. I remember that. Oh yeah. my god! I saw that on both your channels, and yeah. I, I, I didn't do that video. I'm like, I, I can't believe he's doing that. That is so embarrassing. I would be. You know what's so funny? We're we're both we're all three of us attorneys. We've all gone to law school. We've taken the bar exam. We've all practiced law in some capacity, and we would be horrified saying to the judge you're having a romantic relationship with counsel for opposing party well how many of you would like just flippantly say something yeah. like that that's horrifying oh even if okay even if you had all the proof in the world that that was true that's not something you bring up in open court no. Yeah, you wouldn't bring it up in you, open court. The, uh, you would take that up with the disciplinary committee that's not something yep. you put in open oh, court. No. Like, you know, Your Honor, I'm going to ask for you to be recused. I would ask for an in-camera review for why with the court reporter or do it at the bench. The judge refuses, and then you refile. In my state, it's judicial disabilities. You file mm -hmm. something with judicial disabilities. You know, you make your record in case this judge is actually ruling on your case, but you don't do it in open court, and you don't try to use it as, like, it's just horrifying because... Not because we're trying to cover from the judge or anything, right? But it's just something that you would never want to happen. You could never believe it's happening. It's very somber if that's what is happening. You take it seriously. It's not a performative moment. It's horrifying. Yeah, it, it'd be the one of the worst things that could possibly happen. So, the way with how much relish he said that with is so concerning to me. Yeah, it, it's it, again so. <sighs> this guy okay, okay. We're, we're we're gonna move forward um the rest of it's kind of like a uh the re remainder um he's going to complain about the fact that he's being reduced his right to a speedy trial but a uh, speedy trial but the judge is like well you're kind of the cause of the reason why you haven't had a speedy trial uh but uh we're gonna, we're gonna right. move forward because uh, and get to the uh to the final coup de gras where he finally loses his um uh, his, his self-representation so in October oh yeah no 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 we're not going to see this this is another one where he appears and he literally does 50 almost an, yeah about 50 minutes of just stream of consciousness Kim Blandino I know we're not we're not I'm not going to subject my audience <laughs> to that we're going to skip forward to oh this is a quick one uh Apparent. Well, I mean, this one. Apparently, there was an alleged 
plea uh, agreement, but it apparently fell through. Yes or no to whether the matter's it, been resolved. It, it sounds I need to like, make a record. It sounds there, like Judge. Mr. Blandino is not going to sign the guilty plea agreement that he agreed to sign. Okay. Based upon are he in the state in the same place? To... They are right next to each other outside the courthouse. Yeah. This is so cute. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> It's a great like camera angle. I know, right? <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so okay, I've never been a prosecutor, obviously, but I've I, I've been friends with prosecutors. You know, I can't say any of the current prosecutors I'm really close friends with, but but in my previous practice, I was friends with some of the prosecutors. Some of them see the comedy in the defendants. Like, look, he likes him. Look at that. You see that? He likes. <laughs> Yeah, you think I'm crazy, guys. <laughs> like, why would you even say that about this guy? He likes him. Look at him. He's like, he's ridiculous. I have to prosecute him. I'm duty bound. But come on, you know, look at that. <laughs> Although he is pulling his hair out. But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, no, he's, he's got some humanity for him for sure. Right. <laughs> Disqualification. That's not, that's a mischaracterization. <laughs> it, of course it is. Kate Nevada versus Blandino, C341767. Mr. Dickerson and Mr. Bateman, I saw them. Uh, you know what? I think Mr. Bateman has somewhere else to go. So, this is it. This is it. It's They're not out in the hallway. Yeah, I know that Mr. Okay. I'm trying to set him up. Where I can't see. Yeah, we can't. See. This is uh, Kim Blandino appearing pro se for Kim Blandino. I'm um, with Dickerson here outside the Clark Building. I, I just want to enter my objection. I can't see stuff on this blue jeans. Uh, I was in court with uh, Justice Cherry the other day at a settlement okay, conference. That's enough. Okay, Mr. Blandino, that's enough. Case C three four one seven six seven. Can you speak up a bit, Judge? I can barely hear you. I sure can. So I have Mr. Dickerson here for the state. Is standby counsel present? He just texted me at 1247 and said he's finishing up on another hearing. He's right upstairs on the floor yes, above you in Judge Israel's courtroom. Oh, now I can see a little better. You're a little blip in the back. We will wait for Mr. Bateman. <laughs> and then um, Mr. Dickerson, has the matter been resolved? Well, we've come to a negotiation <laughs> at this point in time. Uh, it's my understanding is Mr. Blandino has conveyed his intent to enter uh, the guilty plea that we've come to in our guilty plea agreement. Um, it, I don't know where he stands at this point, though. Well, Judge, <laughs> is it time for me to speak or are we waiting for I don't them? fucking know, yeah, Judge. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm three we'll beers wait. in we'll at this you. point. Please let this we be over, Judge. Here. Okay, recalling um, Blandino. Um, Mr. Bateman, do you want to make your appearance? Uh, yes, yes, Judge. Judge, Judge okay, thank you. So I have this on for entry of plea. Has this matter been resolved? Well, well if I can if speak, I can uh, speak. Uh, Mr. Blandino here. Um, I told uh, Michael in the. This is, by the way, this is a result of the settlement conference that we had on Friday, where we were with Justice Cherry, and um, okay. I was up Has in the- Has the matter been resolved, <laughs> yes or no? Answer the question! The thing is, Judge, I told uh, Can Michael- Mr. Dickerson, Can Mr. someone please- Can anybody please answer my question? On, yes or no to whether the matter's been resolved? It, it I need to like, make a record. It sounds that, like Judge. Mr. Blaine <laughs> is not going to sign the guilty plea agreement that he- agreed to sign okay. based upon him continuing to want to challenge this court's disqualification. That's not, that's <laughs> of course he does. If you will, if, if I get the, the eight judicial district court judges to disqualify themselves, I'll do follow forward with a judge outside of the eight judicial district to preserve those issues on appeal. This is on direction by the Nevada Supreme Court in this amended uh, Petition. Oh, look at look, look, look. Okay, 14, Marty, come on. Look at the, <laughs> look at the prosecutor's face. Rewind just a little oh, bit. Right, right, right. The way Those he was rolling his eyes. This is on direction by the Nevada <laughs> Supreme Court in the Supreme <laughs> 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 
They say on I missed that. That's good. <laughs> that I missed good. that too. But god damn it. <laughs> non non legal advice. We know Kim watches these. Kim, take the plea, no? Take it. Take, take it. it. Take the plea, Kim. Kim, what's the problem? Take the plea. <laughs> it, so, it sounds to me that his condition is that if all the eight judicial district judges disqualify and goes to another judge, he'll accept a guilty plea. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Just take no. the plea. And, just and of course, he wouldn't do it. Of course, he wouldn't no. do it. He would say, I declare victory, and who's going to take my plea? The, all the judges are disqualified. Such arguments involve yeah. factual issues better resolved on appeal with a complete record. I need to make a complete record. Perfect. And I've got so new so information. The parties need to be ready to go to trial on December 6th. <laughs> There's nothing. If you're not going to resolve it today, that's fine. We don't have to. You, judge. So it is on for There's November 30th for calendar calls. Based on and I just indicate to the parties they need to be ready to go forward with trial on December 6th. Understood, Your Honor. Oh, well, I'm not God. ready to go to trial with you, Judge. You're biased. Okay, we'll see you on December 6th. And I gotta call you as a witness. Okay. <laughs> Bye. That look. Ah. Bye-bye. Ah, <laughs> uh, all right. What are King's hobbies? Like, what does he do for fun other than a court, you know? Yeah. So this yeah, was act, this November 30th. This was right around when I was following it live. And so this was the one where I think uh, Mike, you were mentioning, I think you were covering this. Mm -hmm. And this was where she was talking about how he's not showing up. He hasn't appeared. And that, you know, you know what? On Thursday, December 2nd, I'm going to do, do it. We're This is it. We're done. We're and done. so live is when I saw this one, one. The, the December 2nd. Um, hearing where she finally cut his uh, 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 right to self representation. You need to do findings of fact. So, thi so this is the last. Oh yeah, this is the last video uh, that we're going to see tonight. And so before, before, uh, real quick, I'll, I'll let you speak, Natalie. But real quick, I want to. I need to go through super chats, or else we're going to have oh, way too many to go. That's okay. That's okay. Um, Natalie, uh, a kit. Uh, one ninety-two dollars. Natalie, would you have dumped Kim as a client? I think you no, already answered that never. thing. You you wouldn't. No. Oh, Natalie's had worse, I'm sure. Way oh, worse yeah. than Kim. I oh, imagine yeah. that he would be a walk in the park, guy. guys. You have yeah. no idea. <laughs> uh, Ryan Holtz, uh, thank you very much for the two hundred sex. Much appreciated. Uh, Asher seventeen seventy six. Thank you for being a member for seven months. Bet the judge loves Zoom for the mute factor alone. I know a lot of they're not using the mute factor here, but I know a lot of judges uh, like Judge Middleton who and other judges who love that mute button. Oh my god, it's it's a godsend. Um, Reaper twenty two actual, thank you for the ten dollars. Glad you have real lawyers on your channel. Kidding. Thank you, <laughs> Reaper twenty two actual. <laughs> Sean five dollars. Mike, I told you he was crazy. Thank you very much, Mike. <laughs> Reverend Jason Reed, $5. Jesus has nothing to do with this guy. I submit the statement as an expert witness. Thank you, Reverend <laughs> Jason Reed. Uh, Nimrod, thank you for the 20 sex. Uh, some sex to make you get your kitties out. Well, they, they, have, they have plenty of toys. Whatever. <laughs> I, I need to get them a Christmas gift, I guess. I don't want to. Aaron, $5. Thank you very much. Is Bateman being paid by Blandino or is the state... Uh, to be standby counsel. If it's Blandino, I'll probably get some of it up front. I think he's appointed. He's appointed. He's yeah. paid by the state of Maryland, uh, the state of Nevada. Yeah. Uh, Cindy Sue, thank you for the five dollars. Happy holidays, Mike, Artie, and Natalie, and to your cats, dogs, and other pets, significant others, and your families. Thank you very much, Cindy. Oh, thank you. Uh, Sarah Marie for five pounds. Uh, finally getting to see a part of this live. Thanks to Mike for introducing us all to this truly nutty world. It's just squirrels and Kimmy down there. Uh, indeed. Uh, Goddess of Truth, M, for $9.99. Thank you very much. Uh, can any of you confirm that Blandino has been officially designated a vexatious litigant by one of the courts he was in? Uh, please explain how that works. Yes, he has been officially designated as a vexatious lit uh, litigant by the 8th Judicial District. 
Um, he tried to challenge it, and in part one or part two of my uh, series, I go through his uh, challenge to um, the federal district court. He challenged it to the feds, and they say no, um, because he characterized it as being sentenced to life without parole. <laughs> his designation as a vexatious litigant. And even the court's like, uh, this is nothing but hyperbole. You were just labeled a vexatious litigant. Settle down. Oh, yeah, because he tried to file a habeas corpus petition <laughs> for being designated a vexatious litigant. Yeah. Aw, kitty. Um, uh, how, also, please explain how that works. Well, I mean, you know, if you decide to file multiple frivolous complaints over... A period of time, uh, the court may entertain uh, a designation of you as a vexatious litigant. There's usually, uh, depending on the jurisdiction, they'll have a number of factors that are involved. I mean, because ultimately, designating you a vexatious litigant does limit your one of your constitutional rights uh, to petition your government for redress. So there are factors that have to be involved um, before designating somebody as a vexatious litigant, but it can't happen. So um, there is a process. It's just dependent upon the, the facts and circumstances relevant jurisdiction. Uh, Robbie Anderson for $5. Blendino is hiding a red swing line stapler. Um, for the record, I actually own a red swing line stapler, and it is in my desk at the office. I My sister got, me, got it for me like a couple of years ago as a Christmas gift, and it's actually like metal it's not a plastic it's like a full-on metal swing line stapler and it's fucking awesome so don't don't so no hate uh arrow scout uh 199 oops uh already to solve your uh tech tech hire miss mandy i probably should at this point even though it, it'd be a knock uh, on my mandy pride is awesome she's a moderator for me and she's amazing she is amazing but I feel like my pride is preventing me from doing that. Uh, <laughs> and, I don't have those issues. <laughs> uh, Reverend Jason Reed, five dollars. Let us never forget everything this man just said is bullshit. I, you know what? <laughs> I still need to do a watchathon with that movie. I, I know. I keep saying I'm going to do it. I keep putting it off. I apologize to you guys. That'll be one of my New Year's resolutions is for to do a watch along with my cousin Vinny. Um Sparty94, five dollars. Love the trio. Thank you very much, Sparty. Um I've always wanted to have both of them uh on my stream, so I'm glad to have it. Uh, have them here for this uh him blending phenomenon. So I'm glad it's happened finally. Uh and real and this will be the last one. Uh, I'll get to the other super chats I promise at the end, but this will be the last one. Patricia Gallant 499, great stuff, and thank you all. Thank you very much, Patricia. All right, let's get uh, get it. To, uh, this is December 2nd, 2021, uh, where we finally uh, get to hear uh, Blandino lose his right to self representation. law so that I have an appealable or reviewable I'm order. ready. I'm huh? ready. I'm ready to do that. So well, what's <laughs> you, you want them findings of fact and conclusion of the law? I'm going to do it. Don't worry, let's do it. Anything else you want to say? <laughs> okay, State of Nevada versus Blandino, case C, 341767. Will the um, state make their appearance? Mike Dickerson, Nevada, and I'll be after the state, Your Honor. Okay, and it appears as though Blandino is appearing via blue jeans. Mr. Bateman, do you want to make your appearance? There we go. Yes, Tim Bateman, 109328, Tim, I counsel. Tim Blandino, okay, for Tim Blandino again, entering a continuing objection to this uh, blue jeans. I can't see people, can't hear people. I'm going to be interrupting because I can't see faces and, and, and tell body language. It's ridiculous. I need the court to know. Immediately, though, that I filed another motion to disqualify Levin. Of course he did. Jones filed 1239. <laughs> okay. so, Good it. to know, Kim. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I want to say I have a pretty superficial observation, and that's the female prosecutor is, like, way taller than the 
male prosecutor. And that means absolutely nothing. But when they were sitting down in their own individual little Zoom squares or blue mm-hmm. jean squares, that's not how I pictured it to be. And so, like, she's like an Amazon, like, towering <laughs> over him. And I just did not see it that way. Like, it's mm. kind of, like, weird when you see people in real life versus when you, like, get mm. to know them on Zoom. It's so weird how different they look. So that's just something I, I agree. to point out. It means nothing. Anything <laughs> forward, going forward. And it appears as though he filed it right after the other one was denied. Right, and it's so, similarly, kind of making my point for me. Yeah, so it's similarly, um, he filed like to honor. point out they filed he filed like okay. two, if so not three, motions to disqualify within the last 48 hours. Is the state's motion requesting that the court revoke Mr. Blandino's pro per status? Yeah, I, 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 I didn't understand what, what happened with this motion to disqualify. Are you denying um, your own qualify no, you? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'll get to it. I you think cannot... the U.S. It's been filed in bad faith. It's filed in violation of the rules. It's not and your you call. Can't... <laughs> Here's the thing: you can't just wait for the court to issue an order and then file a new motion. The last 48 hours, I think he's filed three. Yeah, and, and this <laughs> one, like the others, is untimely. It, it falls outside the rules on timeliness, as well as it's not supported by an affidavit, which, which indicates the specific reasons. For disqualification, and it's so probably about the 18th one, and it's the same reiteration of everything that he's been fine. I think this may actually be it's the 18th or 19th, your honor, or somewhere around there. And he keeps making the point for himself, right? Uh-huh. We've brought this motion over and over, we've supplemented our prior motion. Your honor has put the defendant on notice of his obstructionist behavior. Your honor found two days ago that he was continuing to obstruct, his failure to appear in court was obstructing. Everything that Mr. Blandino has done in this case has been antithetical to the right of self-representation as contained within the United Supreme Court case Beretta. He is absolutely using his self-representation as what he believes he has a license to obstruct these proceedings and to commit egregious misconduct. He's doing it over and over and Thanks, over Thanks, Ned. Again. I can't get that out of my head now. Right? <laughs> and she is, like, so much taller. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Now I can't unsee it. I, I can't I can't unnotice it, so I should say. It's distracting to me. I'm so sorry. Like, when they were in the little <laughs> Zoom squares, it wasn't a thing. But now that they're standing next to each other, I did... It doesn't matter. I mean, is she... I, well, that's the thing I'm wondering. Is she really tall or is he really short? Well, then that would mean Blandino was really short. And I I think that she's really tall. Just given her overall, I think she's just like a gorgeous Amazon. Like, it, right. I, as a female attorney. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's, she's cute. She, she's cute. It's, that's she's not the thing. It's just, she's like, just if, tall, man. Yeah. Like, I feel like she's like, oh, I could have been a supermodel, but I just chose to be a lawyer. <laughs> just, you know, just for shits and giggles, you know? <laughs> And every, all right, we're everybody all thirsting after the, the, okay, uh, the prosecutor. Sorry, sorry, they, we, we, let's get enough of that from uh, Deborah on Judge Middleton's live stream. Right? Oh, that poor lady. I mean, she really is very good. No, looking. she is. She is attractive, but goddamn, there there's a fan club out there. I already. know. I feel so sorry for her because she's, <laughs> it's a really good attorney. She makes us salient arguments, and people are so distracted by the fact that Miss uh, Deborah. And then, is- and then everybody's like, "Please open up your donations. We like to simp, please." <laughs> we would like to give money to her. <laughs> and Tanksley, uh, Tanksley was denied the right to self-representation based upon the trial court judge having seen Tanksley's performance previously representing himself and finding that it was undoubtedly obstructionist. Here, Your Honor has the benefit of also seeing Mr. Blandino's self-representation, his conduct before this court in this case. Mr. Blandino has been given chance after chance to conform his behavior to the rules, to stop obstructing these proceedings, and to quit with this misconduct that he continues. I think that it's been made clear through my moving papers that based upon the mental health diagnoses that we have seen Mr. Blandino uh, diagnosed with by Dr. Hansen in this case, uh, the personality disorder with narcissistic, schizotypal, and obsessive traits, and seeing what that means, it becomes clear that Mr. Blandino is never going to get off this path. And it's become even more clear because he's been given that opportunity. 
At this point in time, Mr. Blandino has left this court with no other option. He, he is essentially asking this court every time he responds to a motion that has merit. Oh the my! State, is that live? Says, hey, yeah, I think so. he, he is loving it. He, he loves it. Yet yeah, another <laughs> meritless motion to disqualify. It's Mr. Blandino essentially telling this court, "Yes, Your Honor, there's no other option." You have to take away self-representation. I have to agree. I absolutely want to be heard. All of what he said, all of what he said is nonsense. I got to reiterate under this. All of what he just said was bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> statute a motion to disqualify is filed you cannot rule it's black letter law you cannot okay. rule all right us. you can move on you can move on because i'm not going to go through it so move That's on fine. you've made okay, your record here, go the, the, it's irrelevant whether it's the 18th or 19th thomas edison was asked when he uh, had five thousand failures to do the light bulb he said well what did what what did you i mean you looks like you failed he says no i just know five thousand okay. ways that don't work but the point is here is that it took me multiple applications till I finally got Judge Wilson, which is a judge outside the district, which I was asking for in part. So you cannot even include those up until that because I achieved success in part because I got a judge to finally rule on it from outside this district. And so if you agree yeah, that you got what you, you wanted, but he ruled against you and you don't like that. So you got what you wanted, which was having Judge Wilson, who was outside the district, to rule on it. But he still ruled against you, and you're still salty about it, and that's why we're still here. Right. Which, to a reasonable, rational person, would in indicate to them, I don't have a good argument, because all the judges in this district are recused, and I have a judge from outside the district, and they say no. But to Mr. Blandino, it doesn't give him that. It, it tells him instead... Push on, go farther. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and I, I, I forgot to mention this point that the, the Supreme Court went back during his custody issues when this exact thing happened where essentially the entirety of the family division had to recuse themselves from the county. The Supreme Court brought in somebody else outside of the district, outside of the county, and he still objected to the Supreme Court's um, appointed judge. Which but that's his bi biggest victory, and he wants to relive it again and again. Yeah. It's like you can't give him, if you give him, my mom used to say this thing, if you give somebody an inch, they'll take a mile. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. No? And it's like you can't give him an inch. Even, but I'm, I'm of the opinion that it doesn't matter what you think about the defendant. If they're constitutionally, if they're right within the bounds of the law, if they're right, you give them what the law dictates. But some people, you give them one win, and they feel like it gives them carte blanche to do whatever they want. You know, and I know it's it's very hard. It's very it's tough, especially for somebody like like Kim Blandino, to you you have to no matter how much you he grates you, and no matter how much he he clearly is intending on frustrating the process, you have still have to maintain his his constitutional rights. But mm -hmm. at this, with that said. Like uh, even the there the judges here and, and the judges here is gonna say it outright like there, enough is enough like there's literally no merit because as she points out nothing substantive has been done in your case since your the your denial to warrant you to renew a motion to disqualify. Now what makes it different between then and now and here this is this is ridiculous. Uh, it says 3 a.m. on this minute order where you denied the motion to, to disqualify yourself at 11.20 today. Uh, I didn't get it because I didn't check my email until later. But you filed this at 11.20 today, and the very same motion is uh, 11.42 denied by Tierra Jones. What, are you playing tag team, or are you some kind of appellate district court? I mean, this is bizarre. And, and moreover, these are minute orders. You have been told over and over and over again by the Nevada Supreme Court, a minute order is ineffective for any purpose. It's black letter law, Russ versus Clark County School District. Okay, I I, I, I apologize for pausing again, but I want to make this clone because he brings up this 
this effing case again i was obsessive when i went down the rabbit hole i looked up this damn case it had to do with a final judgment it did not deal with a a, a pre-trial motion or pre-trial minute orders are valid in nevada basically an order that's made orally that's that can be re that can be gleaned from the minutes of the of the proceeding the issue in that case dealt with a final judgment on the merits not uh not a a, a pre-trial uh pre-trial motion so he to your viewers how those two things are different because I don't think the average person would know. Those are significantly different. So pre-trial, pre in pre-trial, uh, oftentimes it's a lot, it's not, I won't, I don't want to say informal, but it's, it's not as rigid uh, leading up to trial uh, or, or either, either a criminal or civil case. When in, the, in Nevada, based on the rules, a written judgment, a final judgment, either in civil or criminal has to be written. And so in that case, the judge had on the record in orally made his pronouncement of his judgment of what he's going to do. But the plaintiff or defendant, I forget who, who it was who appealed. He filed his uh, appeal um, prematurely before the judge had issued the actual written order. And the court said that they, that he filed it prematurely because between the time he makes his uh, oral pronouncement of the judgment to when it's put on paper, there could be something that's changed in between. And so that's why the appellate division said that the, that the individual, that the uh, appellant had filed prematurely contrast that with a minute order, but, but that dealt with specifically with a final judgment on the merits compared to a oral uh, order on motion practice which is not final mostly these aren't uh because these are motion hearings they're not necessarily as final as a someone's guilt or innocence or a final judgment on the merits in a civil proceeding so that's why under nevada rules you don't have to be as rigid as to require a written order for every single motion hearing um that's out there because it would just completely clog down the system if they had to make everything in writing and you and you saw in in i noticed in previous cases where a prosecutor would request the judge can you please put this in writing for example in the michael mcdonald case where there are tpo issues and everything like that you want let's make sure that this is all in writing but it's not required under the nevada rules awesome explanation but blandino is obviously conflating the the court ruling to say that any every single order by a judge has to be in writing or else he's not going to adhere to it mm -hmm. because and, you could say sorry it doesn't matter what the formality oh no no, no go ahead I'm, I'm sorry i am so sorry it doesn't matter what the formality is a judge's order be it be it verbal or written has has the same force of law so, yes yeah it's your mind and as to uh minute orders and transcripts and doing filed orders Three months ago, you directed the district attorney to file a written order, prepare the order, keeping me away from uh, Nordstrom and Federico. That hasn't been done, but your job is to supervise what they do. So the, Pointing, the, the you know. uh, wrongfulness for that lies at your doorstep. What you have is, with yourself is incompetence, corruption, and I think there is some mental illness or something going on. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's talking to the judge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now he's Why saying the judge has a mental, oh, a yeah. mental disorder. <laughs> he did that. That is not the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> I don't know what is. Again, yeah. again, imagine, imagine an attorney, a licensed attorney, saying this to a judge. They would be. No. Oh my goodness. Oh. I, I'd be in cuffs. Uh, oh, you'd be no. op open I, contempt. Yeah, like I, no. Yeah. There's a there's a judge that on the shore. He no longer is a judge there, so I can say this quite freely without mentioning his name. Who absolutely hated me when I would practice on the shore, and I thought that it was because he had some type of mental health issue. He, I would never say that. No. Him. Never, never, never. There are. De I'll tell you what. When you pay an attorney, this is not an advertisement for attorneys. Pay an attorney. 
or you go with a public defender who's also an attorney, what you're getting is someone who knows how to say things without saying those type of things. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Oh. Well, that's right. That's right in line in, in, with with uh, implying that someone's having an inappropriate relationship. Yeah. If you really, really believe that a judge is crazy or they're having an inappropriate relationship, open court's not the spot for it. Mm -hmm. that, that's not where to air that that issue. No, no. If you really believe your judge is having a, and again, this judge is having no mental health issues, and, and like I said, pot calling the kettle black here. This this judge is she's totally sound. If anything, she's a bit too lenient. Yeah. But if you genuinely and truly, as a counsel, believe that your judge is your parent in front of ha is having some type of issue, and it happens, it does happen. Mm -hmm. There's a way to deal with that. This is not the way to because deal with it, it, because the way the, because the ultimate reality is what if you're wrong? <gasps> uh -huh. That's oh. the problem. If you are wrong, you completely f yourself. Um, yep. in this Alienated entire matter. Client. Oh, yeah. but the, they don't have a license to lose. They don't, they don't have the same worries that we have. Yeah. Well, it's also Blandino. Blandino just gives no Fs. He, he's yeah, just, right. Right. <laughs> he's got no yeah. Fs to give. Blandino gives no Fs to be the he's name go, of this. He's gone to jail. He doesn't care. Yeah. He doesn't give a, he he's doesn't also smart it. enough to know that he's not facing super serious stuff. Also, he yes. knows he's not doing hard time over it. So he's yeah. just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It's it's a, it that's what's similar. I'm so sorry, Artie. I'm sorry. I'll be quiet after this. Um, <laughs> this is the fun part. Oh yeah. But no, I, like this is like what's similar between him and the sovereign citizens is that rarely are the sovereign citizens or the Moors until you got to the Canaan land Moors that we're looking at, like or rise of the Moors, I should say. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, rarely are they really looking at serious jail time it's usually something very minor that you know threatening a judge and stalking them and harassing them it sounds really crazy but usually it's just within the purview of a district court and you're not looking at more than like maybe like three or four years tops it's not a murder case yeah. for example mm -hmm. right so it's just like they get away with a lot more when they're facing something super serious like that faces like 15 20 30 life you know something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. I bet you they'll they'll start to want, okay, I want an attorney. I don't want to be acting crazy like this. And that's mm -hmm. like, like a, it gives them a lot of leeway to be like, oh, I want to represent myself and advance all these crazy arguments about like my religious beliefs when they're not facing all that much time. They can tie up the court as long as possible and maybe they'll get time served at the end of the day. Yeah. You know? But it, nobody play you. That's what I'm saying. Like you'll see how sincere people hold these beliefs when they're facing like 20, 30 years. Yep. Of life. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have a single um like in our state like armed robbery carries like 30 years, right? Like I don't have a single armed robbery client who advances sovereign citizen beliefs. But give I me like a single 90 day trespass, then maybe you know. It's only very. Yeah. I've only seen it very rarely very very rarely do i see them try this mess um in in the midst of like a serious crime like a murder trial or or like an aggravated robbery type of child very rarely it's it's usually when those guys try that it's when they're already in jail like it's already post conviction and they try to do some post conviction relief they have no they, other options. They got no. They got nothing left yeah. to lose. I, I had one on there. DeKalb where, where he did that. He was. He was. But uh, what? What was uh, that? That was. There were. It was a civil uh, asset forfeiture. But the guy's in the pen. He's not going anywhere, and he just spews spews this stuff. Sit nonsense. But again, nothing to lose, really. Yeah, right. nothing to lose. Already it's there. Only when they really have nothing to lose. Also, I don't know why, but like you talking about this right now makes me think about OPT. So RIP OPT. Mm. Yeah, this makes me think about OPT. He yeah. would love this. He would love this because he works with OPT. Support. Yeah, here's so cheers. <laughs> I, cheers, I, cheers. I was as a matter as a matter of fact uh, today, um, either today or yesterday, I was uh, watching um, the Tracy Hunter, uh, you know mess and that's when i had my 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 collab with opt and that got me thinking about him so mm -hmm. um so yeah i'll like randomly think about him but just like how much joy would he have taken out of kim with like his experience oh with yeah court? he would yeah. have loved this so. yeah i agree r.i.p to opt cheers going on your head my wife is the same age as you had a tumor was removed <laughs> but it's going there for 20 or 30 more. years 
It wasn't until she lost their little ability to speak that they found it, and it was about the size of a baseball. So oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you see, he, but she's exactly the same age as you, depending <laughs> on the month you were born. So are you implying that the judge has a tumor? Year. So, you know, with this <laughs> thing to actually, actually run, road, run over there and say that these motions are meritless, no. Ripro, Echeverria, and... Uh, those two cases that came out of here where Judge Lehman and Judge Bongiovanni knew they should have disqualified themselves, and they didn't. These men, now, by all accounts, they're not good men, but bad men can make good law. Look at Miranda v. Arizona. <laughs> the thing is, is that they waited 30 years, and you, there's a co-defendant in there, Carlos Gurry. So, really, Lehman and Bongiovanni should have been charged, investigated, charged, and prosecuted for the same thing I'm going after you and oh. Tierra Jones for. That's oppression under color of office, which is uh, NRS 197.200. You keep That's running awesome. over my rights, Stop. and I'm supposed to just say, thank you, ma'am, can I have another? It doesn't work that way. <laughs> the fact is, is that I have to resist this violence upon my rights with every fiber of my being and every lawful tool. And this motion to disqualify is it. You won't even follow that. When when it says the thing is filed, it has to be heard by a judge agreed upon by the parties, and if they're <sighs> unable to agree, by a judge appointed. That did happen in part when Judge Wilson was appointed. But then what happens when he shows a few, few flaws, which I filed? I like how Bateman has Tira like a thousand yards there. Now, neither one of you have been filing even any affidavits in response. Your duty is when you get the motion to disqualify, either transfer it immediately or file a challenge within five judicial days. And it used to be two before then Chief Judge Gonzalez. Respond to the state's motion to have your self-representation <laughs> revoked? Well, I, I understand uh, your position completely uh, on the motion to disqualify. I'd like to hear your position on the state's motion to revoke your um, pro per status and appoint an attorney to represent you. Pro se, not pro. I absolutely reject <laughs> that. I can walk, talk, and chew bubble gum as long as I'm given permission to chew bubble gum in a courtroom at one time. And there's no okay. attorney there as capable as I am and they can marshal the facts, the knowledge, and everything I need to defend against his charges. These charges are all oh, going no. to depend on uh, was my specific intent to thwart or to impersonate the witnesses that I have, even my own testimonial show. The, and, and in that regard, the DA is withholding his culpatory evidence uh, under Brady v. Maryland. And so I, I know the case law. I know the procedures. I know how it's supposed to do. I, and and you, if you... If you take away my self-representation, it will just be the most uh, another egregious miscarriage of justice that there is. Yeah, I mean, there's just they don't have the basis for it. I mean, I know the okay, rules. Let's I know how to fair. follow the rules. You, you're the ones that don't know how to follow the rules. You don't know how to follow the statutes. <laughs> you want to do question, just whatever the heck reasonably. you want. You want to be the legislature. <laughs> you want to tell the legislature what the law is. Well, we'll obey this one, like cafeteria. Christianity. I'll take this one and that one and that one, but I'm not going to do that one because that's too tough for me. He, he, so, uh, the very quickly, he does in, enjoy interjecting his politics and his religious beliefs uh, randomly. And some one of my viewers on Discord noted that he was quoted um, in a news article on January 6th of this year. Um, he was not at the Capitol, but he was at a protest in Nevada, and uh, a news article quoted Kim Blandino, who was at a protest uh, uh, on the on the day of the uh, Capitol riot. But um, the only thing that he answered in terms of the judge's questions was like, "I know uh, the 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 facts and circumstances of this case better than anybody." I think that's the extent of what I understand his answer. Oh, that, to the that's fantastic. What, what what I like though is when you know when you've been doing this for a while. I mean, it's obvious. Uh, what, the first time I watched this video, I know, oh, the judges decided to uh, re revoke him. So she's like really laid back because she's like, whatever, say whatever you're not. I'm, I'm revoking your right. Like she's made this decision before she went and sat down today. She's not listening to this and she shouldn't. She, she's basing this on 10 prior appearances. Oh, yeah. She's like, I'm revoking him today and it's overdue. 
So she has a lot of patience for it, but you know, th th that's yeah. all that's going on. It's really just, I totally agree with you, Mike. It's really just an issue of, is he going to say something that's like, oh, wow, this guy's really with it. If this has all been a performance. And now that he knows I'm going to revoke, he's going to like really toe the line and act like he's seriously representing himself. Right. Mm -hmm. And clearly he's on, if he had just been like, you know what, your honor. Okay. never mind. Okay. You're going to revoke. Now, I really want to represent myself. Here are the facts and the law that I'm dealing with, Your Honor. Here are the issues of the case. I'm right. going to proceed. Let's do jury selection. Let's go, you know? Yeah, right. He's never going to do that. So no. she's just going to revoke. Yeah, no, yep. I agree with you 100%. The whole thing is about motion to revoke. The standard is, do I understand the nature of the charges? Do I understand the process or the procedure, uh, the judicial procedure? And can I assist my counsel, which is me, in the defense? And uh, it's yes to all three questions. Now, uh, I've leveled my objections here against you. Does qualify. You said to move on. Okay, I'm moving on. I still maintain that objection. I, I intend to uh, go to the Nevada Supreme Court one more time because I'm entitled to uh, to um, due process. Spoiler here. alert. They and rejected his judge, motion. Even in pretrial. I have not filed even to get a motion to see my son, Andrew. He's going to be a PhD commencement. Oh, so now December it's a motion. I thought it was a notice and demand. My objection to you because you're not impartial. Now so, see. Uh, the discovery issues, the impartiality, I have all these things, you know, under in hand. But, uh, you know, I've just been hoping that you, Judge Jones and the other judicial district court judges would come to your senses Seen my resolve. And oh, right. I, I, I got to say I something here. Right after I did this video, this is when Kim Blandino contacted me. And this is funny because he, he emailed me and it was just him. And it said, please contact Kim Blandino from Kim Blandino. I, I was laughing my ass off. But he calls. And so I get him on the I, I, I thought this is going to go crazy. But I talked to him. I thought he was a nice guy. I get him on there. I end the interview. When I'm getting towards the end, I say, hey, um, you know, go go see your son. Because I had just seen this and it was just the day before. He looked at me just dead like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, th this this request to go see his son, like, didn't, he's like, I, I don't get it. Aww. Just, just no response. I'm like, you were just fighting for it in court. Yeah, I mean, it was like a day after. Yeah, you, you, it was like, it was like either the day after or two days after. It was like, it, it wasn't in context. I'm like, like oh, well, I was like literally trying to be nice. And, and we did have a nice conversation. Yes. And I'm like, you have no idea what I'm talking about. You were just arguing for this uh, vigorously yesterday. Oh. And then he, then, then he clued, and I'm like, okay, whatever. It was like awkward, and I'm just like, let's move on. I, I and to that, you know, to be fair, um, Mr. Blanzino has reached out to me, and I would be more than happy. He wants to be interviewed for my channel. I'd Same for me. Same here. That really okay? Yeah, I, I'd be. I think we could all do it. Like, I'd be so interested in interviewing him for our channel but i really and i don't want to shame him anyway for reaching out because we're attorneys with a platform you know be that no matter how small or how big or how medium you know i don't want him to feel shame for reaching out but he really should speak to a licensed nevada attorney and he really should get them to help him with his case really we're not here to hurt you. We're here, like the attorneys, like it shouldn't take us having a YouTube channel. The attorneys in your state really want to yep. you know, help you. They really, really do. Like, I promise you, they don't want to undermine you. They don't want to throw you under the bus. They, that's what we're here for. We want to help you. So please. That was exactly my message. Yeah, mm -hmm. please, please. You know, if I'm talking to the, the hesitation I have, and I think um, um, Mrs. Kick is helping me to uh, schedule an interview with him. I'd be talking with him for entertainment value. You need an attorney to represent your best interest. Yep. And neither I nor Mike nor Artie can do that because we don't practice in your state. So please, I beg you, please, please, you know, before you appear on one of our channels, just ethically speaking, it's not because I'm trying to ignore him. Is I just don't want to hurt him in any way. I really yep. want him to please get an attorney to represent him who is licensed to practice in his state. He needs he needs the help. And this could have been over long ago and you could have been moved on with your life. Right. So you don't you don't need you don't need the entertainment. You know, we of course we take something from this because Nevada puts these things out publicly and everyone can learn something from it. But you as a person, as a litigant, 
you need to help with counseling. You cannot represent yourself. Please. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's wrong because you're not God and you're not the Nevada or U.S. Supreme Court. You're not the federal court because I, I can, I've read enough cases. The federal court will say, what the oh. heck were you doing down there? Why didn't you just <laughs> and then he says something the like this. and let Blandino have a judge from another district? This just makes absolutely no sense. But if I go to the feds, exhausting all my remedies, take me 20 or 30 years, you'll be on the bench, you'll be in the Bahamas sucking down Mai Tais or whatever on the beach, Judge. Hopefully that you live that long. And uh, the the thing is is that uh, you know that I can argue the case. You know that I know the facts. And the thing, if you revoke my self-representation, I have to take that one immediately to the Nevada Supreme Court on extraordinary writ. Now, I don't know what they're going to do. But they I'll ain't going to do shit. Petition to Spoiler the alert. District court on a habeas pending the exhaustion with the Nevada Supreme Court because you know, and that's why you haven't done also it so denied. far. All the people on the web said, why doesn't you just revoke it a year ago? Because you know what a severe sanction that is to take away my self representation, especially when, and I'm not bragging here, God has given me certain abilities that I haven't seen in very many pro se <laughs> litigants. I'm not bragging, but I've been divinely ordained with knowledge. Please, sir. Knowledge. Please. Knowledge. I just have those. He's given me this. And so to, to, to give me substandard counsel, and I don't care how many bodies he might have from he could have them from all 50 states. He couldn't do anywhere near the job in defense. <laughs> Babe is like, you know, you, I'm sitting right next to you, right? I mean, right. <laughs> what I could do with one arm but tied my mid back. Uh, as Rush Limbaugh said, with half my brain tied my mid back. <laughs> side eye. Uh, uh, he's uh, giving up. his soul, actually. He's passed away now. But, uh, but the whole thing is, is that they don't have the basis for revoking counsel. And they want to talk out of both sides of their mouth. Well, he, she's incompetent, but then um, uh, that uh, we want to revoke counsel. And, and that was another mistake. They were, you took away my competency, and then you didn't, didn't revoke my counsel then. Because if I was incompetent... See, that's where I was going to say, that's where he kind of alludes to the, your point. That they re- adjudicated me competent... And so mm-hmm. now he's point, calling them out saying, this is biting you in the ass yeah. because you found me competent. And so here I am being able to self uh, uh, represent myself. I, I agree. His, and this is, I, I agree with him, actually. I don't think that his mental health issues are really relevant to his ability to represent himself if a, if a mental health professional says he's competent to stay in trial. Mm-hmm. Um, because that behooves the state he can do whatever he wants and then they could just ramrod and railroad right over him but again this is a different type of state i can see other states being like he's competent so let him mm-hmm. let him screw himself we don't care well, you well, know but i think the problem the problem that people are well the problem they're having is that he's the way he's operating the way he's filing these motions he's completely frustrating the process where they're they can't even get to a trial uh, never mind uh, uh, a full-on conviction that he can thereafter say that um, I was, you know, uh, they they improperly deem me competent. You know, they improperly impose the Feretta hearing. Like we're not, we can't even get to that point because he is impl- explicitly frustrating the judicial process. I I I see I forward. Yeah. There's a lot of case law that says, well, then you got to appoint counsel because how can he represent himself? If he said he's incompetent or it's, it's in doubt, his competency is in doubt, then you got to appoint counsel for him. But you didn't do that. So the DA actually had a point when they raised that early on in this case. But, you know, I've never waived my rights, my speedy trial rights. You, you struck an amended indictment while a motion to disqualify was pending. Do you know how egregious that is? And this was an, a, a, an amended indictment that I entered a plea to. And so there's some heck of uh, constitutional issues there. How many indictment the state filed in preparation for him to enter his guilty plea yeah. that he never entered? Right. That he indicated in a letter to me that he had the intent to enter, and he never entered any plea on that amended indictment. 
Well, then the VA should have opened until open court and filed it in open court after I had said, yeah, I'm willing to enter a plea. He's done stuff in open court. That's no excuse. He knows in his heart, the he knows in the heart that they're overcharging with extortion and gross misdemeanor. Uh, not that they're not overcharging with gross misdemeanor, both, but they're way overcharging. He knows. He knows me for now for two and a half years, just about. And he knows that he's not going to be able to bridge that gap of specific intent. There's no way they can prove intended to extort. There's no now he's arguing the merits of the case. An mm -hmm. officer. I said I was a Which volunteer, is not relevant to this motion. Uh, unpaid investigator working with the Commission on Judicial Discipline. Unpaid and investigator working with the judge. And mental health aside, this shows that he's unable to represent himself. He doesn't understand the process at all. He just... One of his charges is impersonating a public officer. He yeah. just uh, self-described as an unpaid investigator of judicial misconduct. Yeah. <laughs> and no one that I represent that to, Linda Bell, all the other judges said exactly the same thing, said, oh, wait a minute, we need to refer for charges. They didn't do it. This is because some Federico... The complaining witness and alleged victim in this case has some juice. And so he's trying to protect his career. He's a temporary judge and he knows that I can go to the county commission and the city of Las Vegas and have his ticket pulled to be a temporary judge based on what he's done. He lied with the temporary a temporary about board, Frederico. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And he was denied that application before Judge Jansen. So, I mean, there's somebody that has some juice and they're just... So if you keep Blandino busy... It'll protect his career. So this is just a bad faith con a pro prosecution. It's vindictive prosecution. And if you're going to go ahead as judge in this case, maintain my right to self-representation, then I demand immediately to have evidentiary hearings on the vindictiveness of the prosecution and to have show that I have already been punished for this double jeopardy both in the competency proceedings oh, and the ankle bracelet when i was on a high level oh, that like statute's not going to pass constantly the condition of uh, yeah yeah the you're under house arrest and have an ankle breast bracelet as a condition of your release or bond yeah, and he's like no, this double, double jeopardy, jeopardy. I'm, like, I'm and i'm in part one or part two part one or part two i'm like screaming like dude that's a condition of your release if you didn't have that, you'd be in jail until trial. Yeah. <laughs> That's not double jeopardy. No. Oh, my goodness. You have to have a little bit more conditions than someone that has no conditions because they deem your flight risk. House you arrest. Can't. You know how many guys currently in the county jail who would kill for oh. house arrest? So many clients of mine would love to have house arrest right about now. They'd be so excited to get the heck up out the jail. Yeah. Muster where it says that you a judge with a approval of a judge, a person can be put on GPS as though he were a convicted person. Oh my God. And that's what my house arrest officer told me. I'm being punished in the same way uh, that a convicted person would be punished, and therefore, he he's a political prisoner. I want to think that he actually thinks he's a political prisoner. You can't punish me again. So these issues are just dynamic, and they're not anything. Desimone v. State, one sixteen, Nevada, one ninety five. That's the two thousand. So it's technically Desimone two, and that was a civil. Uh, he was a drug dealer. The civil, uh, the in the civil case, okay, they executed an amount great. Okay, we're going to move on. Anything else regarding the self-representation? Well, Judge... If, I understand you object. But, okay, I demand. I demand as a matter of, of, of law that if you do revoke, you need to do findings of fact and conclusions of law so that I have an appealable or reviewable I'm order. Ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh -huh. yep. I'm ready to do that. <laughs> so, well, do you have anything else you want to say? <laughs> yep. Well, I just say I object to the fact that these minute orders, again, they weren't uh, findings of fact and conclusions of law. So, uh, are, are you, Judge, are you going to issue that order? Because my my I got a civil suit against Federico, and he uh, I can't I can't contact him to serve process. I had to put an extension of time in my federal case. So until I get a written order, I can't answer an exception so I can do 
civil process in that federal case. So you've been negligent in your duty. If you can't do the job, judge, resign from the bench, please. <laughs> 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 what? fucking guy <laughs> her to resign from the she has been so God damn he's it, probably the only a judge on this case because they're like you're the only one that can handle him she's the she, chief judge for the district uh my understanding is that at this oh, point she's the chief judge for the district oh yeah. thank you for telling me that i didn't know I, so you want the chief judge to yeah, and so so appreciate that. I appreciate okay, that. So at this Thank time, you. Have you said everything you wanted to say? <laughs> it's just like she just takes it. Me? Yeah. Oh, no, I could agree. go on for another couple. Of okay. No, I can. I can. He's like, I could go on for hours, Judge. I bet you could. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So the right to self-representation is not an absolute right. The problem in this case is that the defendant refuses to accept the jurisdiction of the court, which is basic to the rule of law. He's filed multiple... I I, I, please do not interrupt. You can wait till the end, and then you can make your objection. Okay. He's filed numerous 15-plus um, motions to disqualify. Every time one gets denied, he simply files another one. In the last 48 hours, he has filed at least three. In fact, today, after a minute order was issued uh, denying one of his motions to disqualify, within minutes, he filed another motion to disqualify. Um, the motions to disqualify are all meant to obstruct, impede, and manipulate the court procedures and prevent the court from proceeding forward against the defendant and setting the matter for trial. The matter was actually heard by Judge Wilson that I don't even know how many motions to disqualify in because every time it got transferred to a different judge in the eighth to rule on the motion, he would file a motion to disqualify that judge. There's no other explanation than he meant to obstruct, impede, and manipulate the legal proceedings. Judge Wilson, who was appointed by the Nevada Supreme Court, who is from another jurisdiction, said the case was delayed more than a year based on these motions, that he failed to allege legally cognizable grounds supporting a reasonable inference of bias or prejudice, and that summary dismissal was appropriate. He recognized that the facts raised concern defendant has sought delay to manipulate his court proceedings. Judge Wilson found that the allegations were baseless attacks on the court. He provided no facts to support his opinion, that all the judges in the eighth were guilty of misconduct and corruption. Again, called them baseless attacks, and he called most of the allegations pure speculation and innuendo. The allegations are not legally cognizable grounds supporting a reasonable inference of bias. His claims are not legitimate. They are not made in good faith. They're made to gain a tactical advantage in his criminal case. He has not only filed um, these types of motions in Department 12. He tried to do, when Judge Jones tried to do an order to show cause, deeming him a vexatious litigant, what did he do? He filed a motion to disqualify Judge Jones. Even though a recent motion to disqualify Judge, Judge Jones had just been denied, he ignores the orders he ignores the rulings and just continues on with the motions to disqualify. They're made in bad faith. They have no legally cognizable grounds in them, and they're not appropriate. He's doing it for purposes of tactical gain. Based on the record, there is absolutely no question in my mind he's using this to manipulate the court proceedings and prevent the state from proceeding against him. He refused to follow the rules. He refused to follow the mass mandate that were put in place as public help. He stands at the courthouse and demands to be led in the courthouse without a mask. When he's given an opportunity to appear via blue jeans, I mean, I'm grateful he appeared today, but on Tuesday, he refused to appear via blue jeans and he refused to put on a mask and complied with all the rules that every person that comes into the RJC is required to follow 
based on public health policy. Okay, but now that the court is proceeding against him and indicated a bench warrant would be issued for his arrest, now he appears via blue jeans. Yeah, so they had to threaten him with a bench warrant. Okay, <laughs> that makes appear. a lot more sense now. Also, in his attempt to prevent the court from proceeding, came to my attention, he filed an application for a TPO in justice court against this court, contending I had committed aggravated stalking against him. Again, yes, it is not in good faith. It's bad faith on its face. And again, it's a desperate attempt to obstruct, impede, and manipulate. And he only filed that after it appeared that he was not going to be able to continue to file these motions to disqualify. Again, the right to self-representation is not absolute. The court may revoke a defendant's right to self-representation. A defendant can be competent to stand trial and still not competent to represent himself based on being completely disruptive, an obstructionist, and manipulating the court proceedings. He has abused his right of self-representation by being disruptive, refusing to comply with the rules, refusing to accept the orders of the court, refusing to accept that the court does have jurisdiction, and ignoring the rule of law. His conduct has become so disruptive, manipulative, that I have no confidence that we would be able to proceed in a manner if he was permitted to continue to represent himself. He's abused his right by disrupting the judicial process. He is entitled to a fair trial. He's not entitled to abuse the system and make a mockery of the criminal justice system along the way. Mm. He's unwilling to abide by the rules, and so therefore the court is going to revoke his self-representation based on all the conduct up to this date. I was hoping that Mr. Blandino would at some point come around, especially after I warned him that I would do this and that he would start to comply, but I have absolutely no faith whatsoever that he would comply. There's a strong That's indication a strong that if he was permitted to continue, he will continue to be disruptive and continue with his obstructionist behavior. And therefore, I'm not going to allow him to represent himself his conduct is deliberate, and it's meant to obstruct the proceedings. So at this time, I am going to order that Mr. Bateman be appointed to represent Mr. Blandino. You Poor said Mr. I could Bateman. enter my objections after you got done. <laughs> oh, no. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Before, so if the revocation is pending. Objections then, correct? You can think that. I, I hear that. Say that again. I'm saying that you're going to, you're pending my objections, which you're allowing me to do, then you'll revoke after my objections, right? <laughs> because otherwise I don't speak. Huh? Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. You got, no, you got another two minutes. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. You mentioned the rules probably about 20 times in that dialogue that you won't point exactly to what rules I violate. Oh, my God. You know, this, she the did obstructionist, times. and the person's violating the statutes, and I pointed exactly to those statutes okay. that you... All right, all right. Your objection is noted. <laughs> and here, we're done. Again, because I want to address the issue. Based on your repeated... <laughs> you have repeatedly used your right to self-representation to abuse the dignity of these court proceedings. Therefore, the court is gonna revoke your ability to represent yourself. You're gonna be appointed counsel. Mr. Bateman will be appointed counsel to represent you in this matter. Since you are represented by counsel, you are not permitted to file any pleadings. They will not be accepted by the clerk. Okay, so Mr. Bateman, all right. I mean that there after that they go through uh, scheduling, wow. uh, scheduling, um, and there has been another hearing since then, which went by far more smoothly. It lasted only six minutes. Uh, six minutes, and Blandino yeah, did, did not say anything because Bateman was speaking on his client's behalf, so it went a lot smoother.
Uh, yep. I, Mike, do you know when the next hearing is supposed to be or when the next set for, trial? Set for trial February 28th. It'll never go to trial that day in a million years, but it's set for trial February 28th. All right. Fair 2022. Enough. So I, imagine... I would love to know what happens on that date. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, uh, so to answer people's questions in the chat earlier, they were there will probably be a part five because now that we're pretty much up to speed on the, uh, the case, uh, obviously, I'm going to be keeping watch on. Uh, well, you know what the next play is. He's uh, Blandino's going to file motions, uh, he, and and he's going to take this to the Supreme Court. He's going to take this on appeal, whatever it is. He's he's going to go nuts about this order. Oh, of course. <laughs> so there we have it. Uh, well, thanks, Artie. This is this is good stuff. You did a four parter on this. Thank you. This is I, amazing, and this caught me up to everything. Thank you so much. I, I like like I said, like when I go down the rabbit hole, I go full full blast. And it was it was one of those things where I feel like not many people even knew what he was before our Nevada judges made him like infamous. And I think that. Going back to his history, you, you got to see a, a broader picture of where he was coming from before uh, he invited himself to random pro se litigants cases and then thereafter got himself into these current criminal charges. So I thought like going from a, a, a beginning to the present day would have been a, a, a is a nice um, series to go through how a not sovereign citizen. He's not a sovereign citizen by by any of the regular no. uh, no. non-clementor, but rather this is a vexatious litigant that he, they're not uncommon either. Like right. because I've seen them before. I even law school um and even here in New Jersey, they're not sovereign citizens, but there are people who their 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 sole identity is to file lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So whether it be because of mental health issues or they feel that they have a very, very strong vendetta against a particular, you know, institution. So, yeah. But I want to thank you guys for uh, coming in. I I was so happy to have you both on. I really wanted it fun. to happen. Um, I hope we can do it again um, uh, sometime soon. However, I like I said, I will on Wednesday. I'll be on vacation, um, uh, visiting Yay. family in Puerto Rico for Christmas. Uh, but oh, the start of the so new year, lucky. it'll be awesome. Yeah, That's sounds lucky. good. Yeah, I oh, need yeah. to visit family in Jamaica, so maybe it won't be. <laughs> that, that sounds good. I mean, that sounds yeah. good too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> As people of the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm gonna go real quick for the uh, with the super chats, and then we're gonna wrap it all up. Uh, okay. Excuse me, uh, Robbie Anderson, five dollars. Look at him trying to jump out of his seat every time the judge corrects him. Yeah, I saw that too. Uh, Kit, five dollars. Uh, panel, do you think this stems from the fact that he can't accept he was wrong for kidnapping his kids, and the fact that people sided with his wife? Yes, I think yeah. it's part of it. I think part Absolutely. of it, part of it is his own personality, and the other part of it is that they they ruled against him during his custody battle. Because that plus that scintilla of success, the fact that he got judges to recuse themselves, he thinks, "Oh, I'm on to something," and he right. just wants to relive that. That's all. That that definitely could be a factor too. Yeah. Uh, Mad Madam Mims, five dollars. Any chance we can get a second with Mike's boys? Just put the dogs all on for a second. Uh, say capity fel capital felony treason. Call it a day. Thanks. <laughs> capital felony treason. I don't have them handy. Oh. Uh, Sam, I am. Thank you very much for being a member for nine months. What a great panel. Wow. Thank you very much. Um, yes, this is a this is a top tier panel. I'm very happy to <laughs> to host these titans. Yeah, it is. On, Thank you for on, inviting. This made me feel so good. Yeah. Thank you. These these two titans uh, compared to my lowliness, <laughs> I I could not be more humbled right now. Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Sarah Marie, two pounds. How long before court camp steals this and law panel? Oh, uh, you know, you know damn well A and E is gonna gonna eat this up. I mean, they already had uh, Kim Blandino. I again, I oh, I did not know who he was. The first, my first iteration of uh, Kim Blandino was from court camp. So, 
I imagine that they're going to probably ask. I think they probably they. I think they did use um, our Nevada's uh, judges' footage of Michael McDonald when he was uh, did. remanded, exactly and did. I know about that. Yeah, and he was taken in. They copyright strike me when I use really it. well. I've yeah, I used well, the our Nevada judges footage, and then they were like, "No, we." Don't oh yeah, footage. well, I I say really, but honestly, I'm not surprised to be honest. Yeah, that. no, I won that though. I contested it. Yeah, I would, yeah. How dare you use publicly accessible footage? What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Who do I think I am? <laughs> uh. Tom Castro, five dollars. Uh, someone should introduce this clown to P. Barnes and his sidekick Sparky. <laughs> uh, see, the, I, 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 part of me uh, empathizes with it, but but the the rational mind is like, he's not, he's being an ass. He's not being like violent. You know, he's not being physical. Mm -hmm. That's that's what would warrant Mr. Sparky. He's just being an ass to the court mm -hmm. and that doesn't warrant it i i have to say that i have to say that mm -hmm. I don't know. I uh, tom castro five dollars i wish natalie was on the bench she straightened him out <laughs> would you um Na natalie yeah. be a softie on the bench i would be a softie <laughs> mm -hmm. i you know it, it's mm -hmm. so clear that's why you know i have people that write on my channel comments like oh i wish you were a judge and i'm like do you really? I'm so soft. I'm so, so soft. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Lanny, four ninety nine. Thank you very much. Uh, the more Blandino talks, the more he sounds and looks like the magician from Frosty the Snowman. Sea <laughs> 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 uh, Shields, five dollars. I object, especially that I have to pay for this with quote unquote Federal Reserve notes. <laughs> well, you know what, Sea Shield? I I accept fiat currency all day, every day. Um, and I'm not a hypocrite, uh, unlike other gurus who say that fiat currency is worthless, but they'll still take your money anyway. But uh, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> and five dollars from uh, Nathan. What's up, Nathan? It's good to see you, man. Throg Morton is Blandino 30 years from now. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, if you don't know who uh, Throg Morton is, Schrodinger's cat has uh, has two videos on him. He is definitely the guy uh, who has a vendetta against a particular town, who records himself uh, filing these actions against people, and basically uh, gets himself to the point where the police have to go hands-on uh, when he's talking to public officials, meaning like secretaries or clerks. Right. Like he, he, if you if you look him up, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. But yes, I can definitely see that. Uh, Throg Morton is going to be uh, Blandino 30 years from now. And Bill Bill, $5. Excellent discussion. I missed the watching the first three parts live. Very glad I made this one. Awesome panel. Thank you very much, Bill Bill. I appreciate it. Um, I'm just happy to have this panel um, here for the tail end uh, to get us up to speed on Mr. Blandino's exploits. And we'll be able to uh, talk about it for uh, the next year since obviously it's not over yet. But uh again i want to thank uh both of you for coming on uh spending some time with me uh being on this panel it was a fun it was fun it was a blast uh i hope we can do it again soon right Kitty? absolutely merry christmas happy new year hi hi to everyone in the chat i didn't ha i couldn't see chat which is no big deal but i i, I didn't see any comments so that oh. you know Oh, Your we got baby. kitty cat. Aww. They 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 can know they know that I'm about to end the stream. That's why they're here. That's Aww. why they're there. I'm yes. jealous. You both had cats going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I and again, I'm sorry about my cat interrupting the stream. She had some things to say, and I had. Are you to kidding let me? Her. Are you kidding me? My chat like tell me like Artie, stop the stream. We want the cats. <laughs> we don't care what you're doing right now. Just stop wherever you're doing. You're get the doing. Cats. Bring the cats out. Yes. <laughs> no. Oh yes, you tell them. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for having me on, Artie. This was amazing. I needed this after such a long day. Oh my goodness. Motion to suppress everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Bye, Artie. Bye, cats. Bye, Mike. Bye. Right. Take care. Bye, bye. guys. All right, fine, fine, go. All right, see you later, Mike. Take see care. Yeah.
All right, guys. Thank you very much. I uh, I'm so glad this worked out uh, for us. I'm very happy for it. Um, it was an awesome panel. It went on a bit a bit long, but you know what? I think it was worth it. Um, so thank you guys again. Um, uh, please hit that like button. Uh, please check out my uh my Discord when you on your way out. And um, I might stream tomorrow. I might. I might. I don't know yet. But if I don't. I will see you guys uh, probably when I come back next week. Um, I might have a stream, you know, while I'm Puerto Rico. Who knows? But um, if I don't see you guys, have a Merry Christmas. Um, I hope it's safe. I hope you enjoy it with family. If not, I hope it, you enjoy it with the people you love. Um, but uh, thank you guys again for being here. Take care of yourselves. Be well. And I'll see you next time. Adios.